Oh, and now people are starting to talk about the spinoff. It's called How I Met Your Father. Well, we're going to hear from one of its stars today. Plus, the multi-talented Kristen Bell swings by Popstar Plus. We're going to take a fun look back at the beloved movie, A League of Their Own. More on Gina Davis in a bit. But first, here's today's Popstar News. Who's ready for Super Bowl? Yes. Yeah! All right. We are only a few weeks away from the big game. And this morning, we have an exclusive first look. It's actually a trailer. I didn't know they had one of these for the Pepsi Super Bowl 56 okay. halftime show. Features, you know, this is at SoFi in Los Angeles. So this makes sense. All L.A. artists. We got Dr. Dre, Eminem. Well, he's from Detroit. That's different. Mary J. Kendrick Lamar and Snoop Dogg, oh, legendary yeah. artists, answering the call to unite at SoFi Stadium <laughs> next month. For the performance, take a look. This is going to be the first time those five artists have performed together on stage. We cannot wait to see what they have in store. The full halftime show trailer, there's a full version of that titled The Call. It is out today, and I'm sure it'll be buzzing on social oh, media. Yeah. And, of course, you can catch the Super Bowl February 13th. We are busy yes. gonna be in, in the February game. here gonna be in the game. on NBC. Who's going to be in? I like Buffalo, Buffalo and Green Bay. I think that's going to be Super Bowl. Oh, wow. Hard to okay. Tampa and, and the Rams, but who knows? Okay. Okay. All right, next up, Bridgerton. Anticipation is building for the return of Netflix's hit series. On Wednesday, the streaming service teasing fans with this series of new photos from mm. the upcoming season, although the next chapter will be missing. Reggae Jean Page's fan favorite character, the Duke of Hayes. Season two is set to bring in a whole new cast of characters with the Sharma family. The images revealing brother Anthony Bridgerton's new love interest, Hoda's played by Simone oh. Ashley. I've never seen the show, so saying these names is funny. Bridgerton, <laughs> season two starts streaming on March 25th. Wow. Next up. Law and Order SVU. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys, we need to talk about Captain Olivia Benson and Detective Elliot Stabler for a second because this week, Mariska Hargitay, our buddy, stopped by the Drew Barrymore show yeah. and had this to say about her character's relationship with Stabler. He is free. He in the show. And I think he's got eyes for me. I mean, this is literally. But Olivia Benson is hurt. I mean, he left me in a yeah. lurch. Energy is there. Olivia's been in love with him for many a year. Uh, Wait, uh, what is all this? What? Mean? Uh huh. It's on. Uh, Could maybe this decade's long awaited romance finally be this happening? This is it. I don't know. Obviously, the fans went nuts when they saw this. Not just because they're dying to see what happens next for the show, but because they n just care so much about that relationship. Check out some of these tweets. <laughs> One user wrote, Can you release footage? of Hoda and Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> Another adding, what? I need to know how they all reacted to this. Well, guys, what do you think? <laughs> well, That's it so is because we flipped out when they were here and yeah. we were yeah. like, given the third degree, oh like, my God. Gonna we were finally really happen. Drew Barrymore got it out of her. I know. We were but trying to get out of her. We were, and she yeah. was like, oh, I can't see I anything. Can't. Yes. Yes. Spilled the beans with Drew. But Fine. Well, maybe the best, re the best response of all was from Christopher Maloney when he reacted to the news oh. of apparently his character's feelings. He added, I had no idea. <laughs> no, don't be coy. I, I no, just, you know that's what, what he wrote. That's I, a game. I, I, I yeah. had yeah. no idea. Chris. Yeah. Flirting. That's Someone's got to sell text. tickets. That's smart. Yeah. That's, that's it. Cup, sure. bad cop it's promotion. like we didn't know that there were going to be all three Spider-Men. Right, the right. Come on. Next up, Serena Williams. Earlier this week, we showed you that great video, the tennis superstar, uh, of her four-year-old daughter, Olympia. She was working on her wow. backhand, right? Oh, oh my God. Wow. And in a new post, it looks like Olympia and mom are working on honing a very different kind of skill. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what the Empire does. <laughs> That's cute. Empire striking back yes. there. Not good. That's actually a tennis drill. See, you got to play yeah. hard and work hard. Yeah. Kid. Get him out there. We'll yeah. have the backhand for yeah. six hours, and then you do like 10 minutes of light table work. Yeah. 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 Finally, our friend Noodle the Pug. You remember Noodle the oh, Pug? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, bones, no bones? Yeah, he was oh, the beloved. Yeah, bones or no bones, TikTok pup come a long way since he visited us here in Studio 1A last year. Noodle Now is coming out with his very own picture book. <laughs> it's titled Noodle and the No Bones Day. The story is written by, and what a personality, on Noodle's owner, Jonathan Graziano. He was so great. Illustration is done by Dan Tavis. Here's a quick message from our friends Noodle <laughs> and Jonathan about this exciting new project. Shoot. Good morning, Today Show. It's Jonathan and Noodle here, and we are so excited to tell you about 
Noodle's new book coming out. It's called Noodle and the No Bones Day, and it's a sweet little, sweet little picture book, and it's all about, it's a fictional day, where it's all about Noodle having his very first No Bones Day, and me sort of figuring out that that is not a bad thing that everyone is allowed to have a no bones day and days where you need to just kind of slow down and be alone are still good days because it really is such a sweet story and we're so so excited to get to share it with so many people sweet. i'm living a no bones life yeah. Yeah. i wonder what noodles has to say about that wow. and we've got even more news for you after all it is pop start plus so we'll start with charlie puth after teasing new music for months on TikTok today, Puth finally dropped his latest single. It's called Light Switch, and here's a quick peek. Oh no, I don't wanna fight this. You know how to just make me want you to turn me on like a light switch. switch. When you're moving your body, you go down around. You got me at a tight grip. You know how to just make me want you, baby. Well, it sounds like classic Puth to me. Nice falsetto. Up tempo pop, Light Switch is the name of it, is the first single off Charlie's third album, simply called Charlie. Next up and finally, speaking of singers, how about Bill Murray? That's true. The Golden Globe winner can sing, and this week he surprised unsuspecting New Yorkers with an impromptu performance of West Side Stories, I Feel Pretty, in Washington Square Park, of course. Check it out. I feel stunning, hand and trancing. I feel like running and dancing for joy. Makes you wonder why Bill Murray would do something. You know, is he doing it for fun? Is that, you're gonna see that later? Maybe he just wanted to be creative and he went to Washington Square Park, but he can do it all, we know that. Those are your headlines for today. Still to come, everything you need to know about the new How I Met Your Mother spinoff coming up. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Prince. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. For nine seasons, How I Met Your Mother was one of the most popular shows on TV, following the adventures of a group of best friends in New York. Now Hulu is bringing us a spinoff. It's called How I Met Your Father. Francia Raisa, who plays Valentina on the show, spoke to us about it. How I Met Your Father is its own standalone sequel to the original. I know that's like the big thing, like how can you know, it live up to it, but it's really its own show. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, sweetie. Oh, you look tired. Okay, thanks for calling. Are you busy? Not really. Just finished studying. <laughs> Good, because I want to tell you the story of how I met your father. 2005 and 2022 are two different worlds, you know, especially when it comes to dating. You know, you meet a group of people, a group of friends, uh, who meet each other for the first time and instantly click, and you see them navigating their life in friendship, in love, in career, and I think it's it's a nice, uh, necessary escape for a lot of viewers. And even as you know, being a part of it, it was a nice escape for myself to be playing Valentina. How I Met Your Mother is uh, legendary. 
and obviously we have to pay homage to it. So there's definitely a lot of little Easter eggs that we throw in um, the How I Met Your Father that I think a lot of viewers will be very happy about. Oh, I'm so happy you're home. I miss you so much. We don't have time for I miss you's dish. How was your date with Ian? Was he tall? Yes. Was he a good listener? Yes. Were his eyes as kind as his photo? Yes! <laughs> Describing Valentina, I mean, I like doing the whole three words. I say she's fun, flirty, and thriving. She loves to have a good time. And for some reason, I, I just feel like she's a, she's fun, she's a good time. And if you try to set boundaries on her good time, oh, she you will meet her. Like, don't you dare. She sees like a glass half full and she's loyal. I love her friendship with Sophie and you know how welcoming she is to new friends coming in this circle that they're now forming. My favorite part about playing Valentina, you know what? I'm so grateful that with Hulu, we can really push buttons and we can really go there. So I'm overall, I'm having a good time playing her. When I first got the audition sides, I mean, I instantly connected. It was like, I saw her clearly. I saw her fashion. I saw the way she spoke. I heard her and it was like, it was almost meant to be. I knew from the first instant that I had to do her because she's, I mean, she, she's fun, but it, I just saw her clearly. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. Man, being on set with this cast on and off screen is so much fun. And, you know, the, the cool thing about it is being in television so long, I've met a lot of people throughout my career, but there are certain people that you get really excited about. And I had no shame when I came on set. I did meet Hillary about 10 years ago and I was, <laughs> I asked something so awkward and potentially inappropriate, but she was very, uh, very sweet about it. She was pregnant with her first child and I asked her if she had lost her mucus plug yet. Yep, I did that. She did that. So seeing her 10 years later and having the opportunity to work with her and, you know, get to be, become genuine friends on and off screen has been fun. And then, you know, with Chris as well, I think the last week of filming, I gave him a hug and I was like, you didn't deserve that private practice reference. And even, you know, Josh as well, you know, he's, he's so charming in, in this series. It was really fun to work with people that, you know, we all kind of grew up acting, uh, but we had never really worked together. So it was fun to kind of bring us full circle. I'm most excited for viewers just to watch the show. I am also a fan of the original. And of course, when you hear about um, a, a sequel to something that you love so much, you're like, ah, please don't ruin it. But I, as an OG fan myself, not just because I'm in it, I think you guys will be very, very happy. And we create our own world. There's gonna be quotes that you guys love from us, gags that you guys love from us. It, it's so different and it's so fun. And it's very much, you know, today, 2022. So, and it's also nostalgic. One of the things that I love about it, you know, growing up in the era that I did is we make a lot of references, like in, you know, um, the birthday episode when, uh, you know, Sid drops a keg and he goes, we're gonna take this to the grave. I know what you did last summer style. I, that was so funny to me because I grew up in that era and there's more nuggets like that that we say throughout the series that I think a lot of millennials will appreciate. And again, big thanks to Francia. And again, you can find How I Met Your Father on Hulu. Coming up, our buddy Kristen Bell gives us the inside scoop on her new Netflix series. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here?
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Kristen Bell is adding something new to her lengthy list of projects. It's really good, too. It's a mini series. It has a very long title. Here's the title The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. That's the name of the show on Netflix. Kristen joined today to tell us all about it. In her latest role, Kristen Bell stars as a housewife turned armchair detective after witnessing a murder outside her very own window. And Kristen, we see you, but before we talk about it, we found someone who knows a thing or two on the subject who would love to take it from here. Check it out. Oh, yes. The heartbroken housewife in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's what happens to Kristen Bell in Netflix's new series, The Woman in the House, Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. And now everyone's a suspect, even Kristen. Let's take a look. You paint flowers, how come? Seriously, that's what you want to talk about right now? I saw the paintings in your house. They're beautiful. You're very talented. Thank you. You don't want to tell me? Okay, okay, uh, already, Kristen. Already got me. I want to see it. We're hooked. But by the way, Miss Dateline super fan, Keith Morrison <laughs> has got your number. First of all, I, can't, I was not expecting to have Keith Morrison. You know, it's five in the morning here in Los Angeles. I was not expecting to see one of my favorite people on the planet, but I just got so excited. What do you love about uh, that guy? What is it? I mean, everything. He's just such a morbid poet. I mean, no one has pipes like him. And also when he interviews people, he, he, he's so genuinely invested in them. He really cares. Mm -hmm. and, and he's then, done thousands of those, but he really cares. But you're really, Kristen, your obsession with this, you know, the Dateline thing, the murder mystery, the who done it is on full display yeah. here yeah. because, you know, you, you got the script from your friends who are also equally as obsessed in that genre as you are. Mm -hmm. So you go to Netflix and now you have the show. But the title of the show yeah. Hoda, is very long. Let's it's, read it. It's 18 the, words. The, the woman, woman in the, the house across, across the street from, from the, the girl, girl in the window. window. Now, Netflix wanted to shorten that up, but Kristen, yeah. you fought for that. That long title why I said no way because okay so here's a little tip of the hat so this um, show is is definitely it's a, it's a satirical psychological drama so it's it's based on all of these psychological novels that were written for women by women and uh, you know she oh the, the the formula is always the same she drinks too much she might be mixing it with pills she thinks she see, sees a murder no one believes her there's so much formula to it that we thought it was about time that somebody poked fun at it. So um, we're hoping that the title will tip you to the fact that we are making fun of the genre the entire time. Well, and I think I didn't know I've been waiting to do my best uh, sort of bad acting my whole career for this show. Well, you know what? Some people, when they watch these kind of datelines, or even like yours, because this is a murder mystery, people still have to figure out who done it. Mm. Some people can figure it out like Law and Order from the first beginning. You're like, right. oh, that's the that's one. That's the person. Yeah. Are you the person who can crack that nut quickly? No, 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 no. I believe everyone, and I th I take everyone at their word, and I'm like, but he was so sincere. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I use is it's, al it's always the husband, unfortunately. Yeah. But in this one, in The Woman in the House, there's... I, I would love to know if anyone can predict based on the first episode mm. who done it, because I know these writers, and when I was getting the breakdowns, there was no way that I predicted what happened. Because again, every time something suspenseful happens, it's also a little bit poking fun at it. So there, I'm kind of sure my mom is still gonna think this is just a completely real psychological <laughs> drama movie. Right. But there's little tips of the hats. You know, she's an artist and they're like, you're so good. And she's always lamenting about that. But she's, you look at her picture, she's very average. <laughs> the show looks so good and, and you do such a great job. Like you, you, you laugh, yeah. it is satirical. Yeah. But it's also kind of frightening as a psychological thriller. Yeah. Is it hard to sort of be all things to all people? Because you guys pull it off really well. 
Yeah, that was one of my main problems is I was like, but is it, I'm, I'm trying to play it sincere, but is it funny? And then they kept telling me like, yes, just play it completely mm -hmm. straight. Everything around us is funny. Like when she pours her wine, the prop department filled the bottles that were opaque to the exact surface tension line. So I never looked when I was pouring the wine. <laughs> and I would just dump completely and it would always be at surface tension. Also, look how many corks there are. That's not healthy. Like there's so many things like that. So I feel like I gave a pretty sincere performance and then it ended up just being really um, comedic. You got up at five in the morning to sit and talk with us. Mm -hmm. did, did, we did. See your, did we see your husband wandering around too or are you alone? If we did, I morning? have a question for him about we, the, the hiccups. He had like 50 hours of hiccups on social it's media. It's so weird. How did that start did. and how did you end it? I think he's gone back up with the girls. He was helping me with a tech problem. Okay. We don't know how it started. Our theory is that he ate too many chocolates. He ate like a half a box of <laughs> chocolates. We got really good so chocolates. And chocolate is like an acid reflux irritator. We don't know how it ended either. We tried everything. I had him like shooting cups of apple cider vinegar, taking a tablespoon of sugar, drinking water upside down, holding his breath, breathing into a bag, meditating. Nothing would cure it. And then literally he was getting in the car to go to the doctor because it says if you have them for three days, go check in with your doctor. That's when they stop. Wait, Christian, just quickly, you have two kids, seven and eight. I've got two girls, seven yeah. and nine. Literally, our basement is destroyed because of they make slime and there's glue and activator. Do you have these problems? Slime and glitter were created by the devil. Yes, I fully okay, agree. Okay, I don't know why. We're, we have a hard enough time as parents. Why do they do that to us? Yeah, the other day, they took a ball of slime and they popped mm -hmm. it right on one of our yeah. rescues. Whiskey, that dog in that picture, right on his forehead. Yeah. So he had this big clump of slime. He's also three-legged and he's Kristen. a trauma rescue. I'm sorry, we got to We, love, we you. love you. We got to go. Netflix will be watching too. January 28th. Yeah. She's the best. She's so great. Kristen Bell, such a joy. Coming up, there's no crying in baseball. It's a famous line from a famous movie, League of Their Own. We'll have a little throwback fun right after this. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Gina Davis turns 66 tomorrow, so we thought it'd be fun to pull something from the vault to celebrate. Now check out this conversation about an absolute classic movie, A League of Their Own. We take you back to 1992. He may not be a movie star, but recently our correspondent at large, Joe Gargiola, has been spending time with plenty of them. All the stars of the new movie, A League of Their Own. Today, Joe's talking with the woman who plays the catcher for the Rockford Peaches, actress Gina Davis. We begin with the prettier of the two catchers, explaining to the seasoned veteran why she wanted the role of Dottie Henson. Uh, I like that she's sort of uh, real uh, strong and self-possessed and uh, talented and, and uh, I've just, I've never played an athlete before. I, well, you didn't have an athletic background outside of, uh, mm -hmm. you were a hurdler and a high jumper. Mm -hmm. yeah, you didn't play school. baseball. No, no, didn't. No, I, I was on the track team in high school, but uh, I never played any real ball sports much. No. The up. challenge for you then was really the character. Well, yeah, yeah. I thought it was a really uh, interesting character. You know, um, the 
you know everything about baseball, obviously, but uh, the catcher is sort of the leader in the team or has a lot of leadership qualities, and that's Keep a lot it up, like, Gina, what, you're my, doing uh, great. what my character is like. So, <laughs> so uh, and I hadn't, hadn't played a character like that before. So. You had to learn how to throw the ball. You had to learn how to bat. How tough was that? Um, it was it was really the most fun part, I think. The the part of just learning baseball before we started shooting it or anything. Just training every day and going out on the field and having batting and hitting and throwing. And uh, practice every day was, was the most fun. I really, I like that. I like to be sort of focused on, on one thing. And, and, uh, you had to know that at certain times a drop third strike, you tagged the batter. Did you have to learn right. all that in addition to your parts? Right, yeah, yeah, we did. We had, um, uh, Penny gave us Xerox copies of rule, you know, baseball rule books and, and things. And, uh, and we also had to learn sort of period style um, baseball playing because catching was, was different then. You know, the, the glove was different. It wasn't hinged. And so uh, uh, there was a lot. There was a lot to learn. You know, some of the plays you had were very physical. Did you end up with bruises from a... Uh... Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I had. I was the queen of bruises on this movie. I had bruises all over, really round, perfectly baseball-shaped bruises all over my body. And then, uh, and then I learned that the glove is actually much more effective to catch with than any other part of your body. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I started using that. <laughs> On the set, Tom Hanks said you were the, you were loose. You were the, uh, the ringleader of looseness. Right, right. Well, what did you do? Um, I have a, a high fooling around quotient, I think. Um, I like to uh, You want to define that fooling fun. around quotient? <laughs> I like to have fun, you know, and, and the, the hours were so long and it was so hot and difficult that uh, I was always kind of organizing people to do things like play games or uh, sing or I, I had this whole idea that we should put on a musical for the crew and so I sort of forced people to practice for that all the time. And, what uh, was the musical? <laughs> was Jesus Christ Superstar for some reason, I don't know. I kind of read about that. You were going to use coconuts for bras? Mm -hmm. It was going to be Jesus Christ Superstar Goes Hawaiian. But. <laughs> That is... You know, the Last Supper was like a luau, and everything, but we, we never actually put it on. It was just more conceptual. And Madonna couldn't make the team, huh? She, uh, she actually wasn't in the movie. It's actually a publicity stunt. She was not, she was not there. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Oh, well, come on. Keep it going. <laughs> Am I ever going to answer this? Let me think of another one now. Uh, no, she was, she was fine. She worked really hard. She uh, was out there with us practicing. Everything. Now, everybody did an imitation of Penny Marshall. Do you have an imitation of Penny Marshall? Well, she, she, uh, my, my favorite Penny story was that one day, I was, it was my first scene where I'm up to bat, and you know my character hits a home run every time, and, and uh, it was it was difficult and and to get it just right and per perfect, and so the camera's rolling and rolling and, and pitch after pitch, and it's not not happening, and and you know, but I'm slogging away and, and uh, whatever, and so uh, she starts pacing behind the camera, kind of smoking, pacing, 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 and it's really distracting and then she, she finally starts rubbing her face and saying, hit the ball, hit the ball, put me out of my misery. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this is really helping Penny, thank you, that's, that's great. In the final decision of a script, how big a part does the natural instincts of Gina Davis, how, how big a part does that play? Very big, I would say. Just uh, the, the feeling I get when I read something uh, and it just clicks for me is the most important factor. You know, when I, it, it's just that sort of intuition thing. Do you agree that since your role in Thelma and Louise that people are looking at you in a different light? Yes, yeah, I think so, definitely. And uh, uh, in some ways it feels like this, uh, this film is cementing it, you know, because it is another uh, film where women have the big parts and it's sort of about women's adventures and things like that. And uh, I think it's great. I, I love that. I, Do you feel extra pressure from that? There's, there's a pressure I put on myself, um, gladly. And a quick happy early birthday to Miss Gina Davis. Thanks for watching, everybody. Another star-packed edition of Pop Star Plus comes to an end. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.
So um, at the time, I was living in Paris. I was just a couple months out of college, and I was working as a paralegal and pursuing mm-hmm. this other you know, stringer position on the side. And I hadn't been feeling well for a while. It started with an itch, and the itch blossomed into all kinds of mysterious symptoms. Mm-hmm. I was getting colds all the time and coming down with bouts of bronchitis. Uh, but the biggest symptom I had was fatigue. Mm. But of course, at 22, everyone is tired. Yeah. Everyone that I was hanging out with was working hard and going out at night dancing. And so I didn't really make much of it. And I went to see a number of doctors, all of whom you know treated that specific symptom or ailment right. and sent me home. And toward the end of my time in Paris, I started to get the feeling that my doctors that I was seeing weren't taking me seriously. Mm -hmm. But I think the truth is I wasn't entirely taking myself seriously. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I got to a point where I was so weak, it was a struggle to walk up and down the stairs, that I found myself in an emergency room. And within 24 hours... I was on a plane back home to upstate New York, and I got the bone marrow biopsy that led to my actual diagnosis. To hear the words that you were diagnosed with a specific type of leukemia at 22 is scary enough, but when they said the chances of survival were one in three, I mean, my God, like what does a, what goes through a 22 year old's head? I think there was this immediate sense of fracture. There was my life before yeah. and everything that came after. And, you know, I never returned to Paris, to my apartment, to my job. Friends packed up my things and, and mm. sent them to my house. And I had this sense, even though I couldn't quite wrap my head around what it meant to have a cancer diagnosis at 22, that the person I'd been before was buried. There was Mm. no returning Mm. to that pre-diagnosis self. The cancer fight, and I don't know how you describe it, but it usually there's a beginning and an end point for it. I mean, I had breast cancer, I think for six or eight months, I went through stuff. Yeah. Your timing, the, the three and a half, was it three and a half, four years of going through chemo and bone marrow and chemo again. How did you see light and how Mm -hmm. did you survive all those days? One of the most challenging parts of that experience was the sense of the goalposts moving. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, on day one that I was going to be in treatment for three and a half years. And they say you can survive anything as long as you can see the end date in sight. And there came a point in my treatment where I couldn't see that end in sight. Mm. And That was the most challenging, I think, to know how to kind of anchor yourself when you're swimming in a sea of uncertainty. I mean, there are life lessons that come in your worst times. I mean, some change we we choose in our life and some is cast upon us and Mm -hmm. you have to figure it out. And I don't know, I remember so clearly how the world got clear. Like I was never clear. I think I was kind of always mushy about things. Mm -hmm. Those are my friends. I don't love that one so much, but so what? They're nice. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And then all of a sudden you realize like my life has a beginning and an end and I'm not wasting time. Like that time is over. Yeah. Did you have that sensation? Yeah. I think like, you know, a lot of people in their early 20s, I had this feeling of time. Yes. I had time to figure out who I was, time to figure out what I wanted to do. And that diagnosis brought into immediate, urgent focus, the fact that We're all here for a finite Mm -hmm. period of time. And I felt a strange sense of urgency around time. Mm -hmm. And I had the same experience. It felt like all the artifice just kind of fell away. Yeah, I got clear not only about who my friends were, but maybe more importantly, who I wanted to be friends with and what Mm -hmm. kind of relationships I wanted to cultivate. And I had such limited energy that I was well enough to maybe do three things every day, small Mm. things like write an email, watch a movie, see a friend. And what that meant for me was that I had to get very clear about my priorities. Wow, that is so true. And it 
there's something so strange about how free you feel suddenly. You didn't even realize you were carrying all that heavy junk around. Yeah. It's like I didn't even, you know, you don't even realize it. It's like my shoulders feel lighter, even okay. though you're in the middle of it. So to have a doctor say to you after a bone marrow transplant and chemo again, okay, I don't know if you used the term cancer-free or mm -hmm. you are in remission, but to hear those words, what did, what did that moment feel like? Mm. I mean, I had been hoping to hear those words for almost three and a half years. The goal had always been to survive, and I'd spent, you know, 1,400 days working tirelessly oh, toward that goal. And I thought when I got to that place, I would want to celebrate. Yeah. I wanted to feel grateful. I wanted to quickly and organically fold back into the rhythms of living. But instead, I found myself in this kind of limbo, this kind of in-between place where on paper I was better, mm -hmm. but off paper I couldn't have felt further from being the healthy, happy, you know, 27-year-old that I'd hoped to be on the other side of all this. Well, especially because when you spend almost, well, three and a half years in one space, the I, it's the same thing, the idea that, okay, now this is over and all your friends or some of your friends and colleagues are saying, oh, great. So now we can go back to the way it was. Let's go out to the bar. Let's go have some fun. Exactly. You weren't feeling those things. Yeah, I wanted to be you feeling wanted those to, yeah. things. But, you know, I think often when we talk about things like cancer, the kind of final act yeah. or the end of the story is comes with a cure. Uh, but we mm -hmm. don't talk a lot about what happens after. Mm -hmm. And... It took me a, a while to even acknowledge to myself how much I was struggling. There were so many unanswered questions that I didn't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how do I find a job when I need to nap for four hours mm -hmm. in the day or my immune system is still sending me to the emergency room on mm -hmm. a regular basis? How do I date when I have a quarter inch of hair and a port still in my chest, how do I talk about, you know, the side effects of chemo, like infertility or early menopause? Like all of it felt so overwhelming. And in a weird way, I found myself almost wishing that I was still sick, not because I wanted to have leukemia, of course, but I understood the hospital ecosystem. Right. That was the world right. I lived in for four years. I felt comfortable there. I looked like the other patients. It was the outside world mm -hmm. that felt scary and foreign and daunting to me. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this? doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> it was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. This your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. 
What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? So I love your New York Times column. I thought it was so beautiful and riveting and moving. But what I loved so much more was when people reached out to you because they wanted, because they, they connected with you. You had mm -hmm. this way that whether you were sick before or you weren't or you knew, somehow people felt you, like they, you reached across and you grabbed them by the heart. Mm -hmm. And people wrote you letters. And, you know, in, in this industry, sometimes you get a letter and you got beautiful letters and you read them, but then you did something totally amazing. Like I have not, <laughs> I have not heard of someone doing this, but what did you do with those letters that you got? So, you know, in that year after I finished treatment, I was in the most lost place yeah. I've ever been. I knew I wasn't a cancer patient anymore. I knew I couldn't return to the person I'd been pre-diagnosis, but I had no idea who I was. And so I started thinking about these different rites of passages that we have in our culture, these kind of ritualized ceremonies that help us move through transitions mm -hmm. like baby showers and mm -hmm. weddings and funerals. And I realized that there wasn't a kind of ritual or rite of passage when you emerge from a long illness. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. I needed time to reckon with what I'd been through and to reflect on yeah. who I wanted to become. I needed the space away from my home and my kind of cancer identity to really kind of come into my own. And so I hatched this kind of boondoggle <laughs> of a plan and I decided to learn how to drive. You hadn't, you didn't have your license. I did not point. have my license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I rented out my apartment yeah. and I borrowed a friend's car and I ended up embarking on a 15,000 mile road trip across the country to meet some of the strangers who'd written me letters about their own major life interruptions mm. and their own stories of transition. And they really, you know, those individuals, there were about 22 of them that I visited, became my sort of breadcrumb trail through the wilderness of survivorship. Mm. I was always prepared for the other shoe to drop, ah. prepared for something to go wrong. And what I found instead in these encounters and on that road trip was that the world really welcomed me at mm. every turn. I ended up, you know, staying on someone's fold out couch. I stayed on a ranch in Wyoming with a family of survivalist ranchers. I visited a high school teacher in California who was grieving the death of her son. I went oh. to a, a maximum security prison in Texas to visit a death row convict. And each of those conversations helped me gain a sense of perspective mm. on my own predicament. But more than that, I think it showed me a way to reimagine community and it gave me this sense of connection that at a time in my life when I felt so lost and so isolated really helped me see a path forward. Are you happy? I'm so happy. <laughs> what, what makes you happy now? The strange thing in the last year of this pandemic is I found myself uh, living a, a version of the life that I had when I was sick, which mm. is to say that my circle is much smaller, smaller right. my life is quieter. And I don't know about you, but I have spent so much of the last decade striving and working and hustling. And I feel so privileged to get to do work that I love. Mm -hmm. But I've also been thinking about the way that, that working at that pace can be its own kind mm -hmm. of trauma response. Mm -hmm. So this year for me, my goal has been leisure. Uh, which isn't to say I'm not working all the or time, sure. yeah. but you know, these small moments that I've gotten to have in the last year of, of being at home with our dogs, of gardening, of hanging out with my partner, John. Of you know, it's so interesting because I, I sometimes think like life is full of exclamation points. It's like the good ones. You graduated from college, you meet a great guy, you have a baby, you get married. And then on the flip side, it's you get a sad diagnosis, somebody passes away, et cetera. But most of the days mm. are just Wednesday yeah. in the middle. 
Nothing terrific and nothing horrible, just Wednesday. Yeah, something I've been thinking about recently is trying to approach my Wednesday as ritual, Hmm. washing the dishes as ritual, Mm -hmm. gardening as ritual, and really trying to kind of slow down and savor that because it's so easy to move from one exclamation point to the next. But I'm sure as you know, you know, when you get a scary diagnosis. You're not thinking about the things that are on your resume. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about the people you love Mm -hmm. and wanting to spend time with them. You're thinking about the things that nourish you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all the rest doesn't matter as much and it falls away. You know, we live in a country that has this culture uh, or this anxiety of around accomplishment. Um, And in this season in my life, I'm trying very hard um, to resist that and, and to kind of center myself back in those things that I love, the same things that I loved as a little girl, the dancing and music and, and writing and, and family. Speaking of music, music has always been a big part of your life. Music has always been a big part of my life which explains your very handsome and awesome boyfriend. <laughs> if you don't know John Baptiste, and we're going to bring him in here in just a second, but he's a cool cat, boy. Is he something special? He is. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> it was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. I'm sitting smack dab in the middle of a love story. (laughs) Um, Okay, so you're 13 years old. You're both geeks. I know you are at 13 because nobody was not a geek at 13. So are you guys close to the same age? Yeah, we're about a year and a half apart. A year and a half apart. Mm -hmm. So, uh, John, do you remember uh, your girl from band camp at age 13? <laughs> so, here's what I remember. Uh huh. I remember Birkenstocks. This is not an endorsement. You had Birkenstocks on? Before they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> she was ahead. Suleika was ahead. <laughs> now, and I also must say, I am, am honored to talk to you because when I was growing up at that time, I was watching you on WWL. Come on. Oh. Come on. <laughs> so, when I was growing up in New Orleans, Kenner, Louisiana, uh-huh. you'd be on TV. My first time leaving 
was to go to this band camp. First time leaving <laughs> home and being somewhere for the summer. You go somewhere for the summer for the first time, it's like a new world. Yeah, where you, was band camp? Where were you? Saratoga Springs. Oh, so you took a big trip. This yes. was not a nothing. All oh, right. Upstate New York. <laughs> so you were already, what instrument were you playing, John, at the Piano. time? Piano, and I saw her in the courtyard and this is, you know, again, I thought this was maybe a New York thing. People wear Birkenstocks. <laughs> Nobody was wearing that in New Orleans. No, they weren't. Those were not cool in New Orleans. And I thought it, it would, what immediately came to my mind was, oh, she's like a, a hippie. <laughs> you know, like granola. Like <laughs> that vibe. Crunchy granola. Uh, and how did you, at 13, were you at, did you have any confidence level at 13? Or were you like a lot of 13-year-old girls? You did? She did. Definitely. I was what? a 13 year old Definitely. going on 20. I thought I was far more mature than I actually was. That's Definitely. impressive. <laughs> Most 13 year old girls feel so incredibly awkward. I was just coming out of what I call UDS, ugly duckling syndrome. <laughs> I'd just gotten contacts for the first oh, time to replace my, uh -huh. my bottle Definitely. thick glasses. <laughs> okay, so now at 13, that's when the crushes start happening. Did, was there a crush or were you all just friends? No, no, no crush. Yeah. I would. I was very much a uh, late bloomer. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was into music and video games uh -huh. and martial arts and chess, <laughs> things like Eclectic. that. Eclectic, you got a nice array. Uh, all the nerdy activities. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say all the introspective kind okay. of uh, introvert activities. Yeah. So you see. So like when you saw him, was did you just thought a, a, a nice kid, nice guy? <laughs> I remember thinking he was a little strange because I I think I tried to initiate a conversation and conversation was not happening. You were not into it. You just weren't a conversationalist then. I think there's a glorious awkwardness <laughs> in uh, coming into your own at that age. Yeah, and it's I think weird. I, it's it's strange, but a beautiful strange. And I feel like I've kept that. Until adulthood, <laughs> but you know, I still, you know, I feel like we probably tried to speak, and at that time, anybody who I talked to, yeah, and she's always been a great communicator, yeah. always magnetic, always yeah. able to communicate she's got it. the emotions that other people are feeling. I, I noticed that about her immediately. Yeah, um, but there was no crush. We 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 linked later in college. And that's when we started to really become more friends. You know what's weird? Mm -hmm. I am my first my first week at Juilliard I was on the one train with my friend Michelle and I had no you know I hadn't thought about John since band camp several years earlier which oh, when you're a teenager yeah. feels like yeah. a decade <laughs> right. and I see this young man on the train who is singing to himself and playing the air piano that's and nice. people were kind of staring because even in New York that's not a site that you see every day and I looked at him and I turned to my friend and I said that's John Batiste. What is he doing here? And I said, that's the man I'm going to marry someday. Wait. And I just wait, blurted wait, it out wait, and forgot stop about it. it. St I want to stop for a second. <laughs> On the one train, you knew you were going to marry John? It, it was like one of those things you just say, and I didn't think about it, and I didn't give it much weight. <laughs> so is that the last you see of her before you know she's not feeling well? No. Mm -hmm. we, we saw each other. This is in college, my yeah. first year, her last year of high school then she doesn't end up going to Juilliard. Right. she goes to princeton then right. at princeton she has this um incredible time we don't see each other in passing we see each other at performances here and there right. we have mutual friends but we're not really as connected, connected. yeah then she has a going away party because she's moving you move into paris and i went to the going away party with a mutual friend of ours mm -hmm. but then that was when there was a, a spark at that party the oh. going away party but oh, she was going away. Going to Paris. So bye. That it was not, you know, oh, the time. You were pining, John, <laughs> a little, a little. You're pining we a little. Had a, a, a moment. Uh -huh. We had a moment. Well, you got to have a moment. I mean, come on, going to Paris, y'all. There's love in the air. Yes. Okay, so let's fast forward to, how did you learn that Suleika was was ill, was not well? So that same friend Michelle told me one day we. Um, were playing you know my band we would play in public places often mm -hmm. you know for not for money just to bring mm -hmm. the music revelry mm -hmm. joy uh we were playing in the subway one day mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. she told me and i gathered the rest of my band because at this time it was just a few of us mm -hmm. and i got the rest of them and we went to the hospital mm -hmm. and and um you know 
I hadn't heard that she was that ill until that moment. Mm. It was a it was a real moment of clarity that I had to do something. And what mm. I do is music. I just felt I needed to bring that to the situation to help in any way that I could. So that's what I did. But that must have been emotional because you didn't expect to, to see her in that way. I, I, I guess there's an impact that a person has on you that you don't know the full extent of until you're in a moment of mm -hmm. crisis. So it felt like I needed to do something in that moment. Even though we weren't super close friends, it felt like, oh, I really connect with this person. I respect this person, what she's all about, what I know of her. This is this is important. So that's why we went to the, the hospital and we played and it was a beautiful experience. Did you feel like you were doing some good? Yes, I, I felt like we were doing good, but that's that was a, a special thing for our relationship, a special time to, to, you know, you see each other through these different phases and you see what a person is like when they're 13, 14. Then you see what a person is like at the beginning of college. Then you see what a person is like when they finish college and going out into the world. Then you see what a person is like when they're going through tremendous duress, the impact of that on their life, meeting the family, understanding, you know, how that impacts a whole community. But it's also <laughs> a testament to John, because John is someone who, who shows up in the difficult moments and who keeps on showing up, not just for me, but for everybody. Mm. Um, and he's always been that way. <laughs> well, I, you, you, you gotta show him. <laughs> you gotta show people you love them. Mm -hmm. I, I urge everybody out there, you show the person in your life who you haven't told, or you haven't shown your love, show them. So what's uh, what's the future with you two? Well, you we were talking about the uh, the kids mm -hmm. you, that 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 you have in your life. That's a beautiful thing to have family. We uh, we look forward to something in that realm. You know, there's complications. Yeah. Um. You know, I don't I, I don't I don't feel like that is ever a barrier to no. family because you, you can you can plenty of ways out. to make mm -hmm. a family, right? Yeah, I, I think it's possible. It's, it's all about love. Well, and I'll just say, like, I think one of my big anxieties coming out of this illness was finding a partner who understood that mm -hmm. and who wasn't sort of scared of having hard conversations or awkward mm -hmm. conversations around things. Um, and I remember talking to John about infertility early on mm -hmm. uh, as a result of my treatment, and he said, there are many ways to make a family mm. and it's its own kind of creative act and you've just been understanding and, and open in a way that I wish were the norm um, wow. but that I feel very grateful for. This she's got to be real. Come. She's a very real person. By the way. Eloquent <laughs> but she can say <laughs> she's real so you, it's easy to have real authentic conversations. Well you know I think John is one of the most creatively brilliant people I know, but what I've loved observing and learning from is the way creativity informs every aspect of his life, including our relationship. Mm. And so one example of that is we both travel a lot for work in non-pandemic times, and because of that have to spend sometimes several weeks apart. And he came up with this idea early on in our relationship, which was to write each other a letter mm. every day by hand. Instead of doing like your morning morning pages or writing in a journal, he would write a letter by hand, take a photo of it and text it to me. And I it brought me that. back to those letters <gasps> that I got on the road trip. Oh, wow. And mm. I think that there's sometimes certain things that you can only say in the written word that you don't even maybe know you need to say that come out when you're writing letters. Um, but you're always doing stuff like that. You're always finding creative ways for mm. us to deepen our relationship and to stay connected. By the way, that is the most beautiful and thoughtful and smart. I was thinking, write a letter, but how are you ever gonna get it? You take a picture and text it so you can actually read the handwriting. Brilliant. Right? <laughs> Joel and I are stealing that. Thank you. <laughs> I have to tell you, it's so beautiful because watching your story from the beginning unfold, and I've been I've been reading and watching a lot leading up to this interview, and sitting here in this moment and looking at you two is so beautiful. 
Yeah. <laughs> Love is in the air, baby. Oh. Yes. All right, Suleika, John, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you being on Making Space. Hey, today all day, coming up on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite dinner recipes that also make great leftovers. If you happen to be dining solo, these weeknight meals are hearty, healthy, and best of all, pretty easy to make, and you'll have a lot to share. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of feels like you need an occasion to cook. But guess what? You don't need to be going to a dinner party to make delicious food for yourself. So you know what? A party for one? It's hashtag still a party. So I'm gonna show you how to get this party started with my delicious, flavorful, best all ever, and a crunchy, creamy kale salad. Dal is a staple in Indian cooking. It was always on my dinner table growing up, thanks to my mom. My mom and I still shop for our lentils at Indian markets, but you can get them wherever you get your groceries. Little tip for cooking lentils, super important to always rinse them before you cook them. You wanna rinse them until the water runs clear so we get rid of any debris, and then we're gonna soak them. This will allow it to cook faster, and you can soak them either overnight or at least up to 30 minutes. I have my pre-soaked lentils here, and now all I'm gonna do is drain the water out, like so. Get any residual lentils out. Can't leave any behind. They'll feel left out. Okay, I'm gonna let these hang out for a bit while we prepare the base of our dal. I've heated my stove to medium heat and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Let that heat up and then I'll work on my onions, garlic, and ginger. Adding a bit of olive oil here. Let that heat up. Now, I'm gonna talk about my aromatics. So, onions, garlic, and ginger. I cannot imagine any dal without these base ingredients. They're the aromatics that really impart a lot of flavor. It's gonna become really deep and rich and flavorful, especially when paired with a fat like olive oil. I've got one whole onion that I've diced here, and I'm just gonna add it into my oil. We love that sizzle. And I just wanna saute the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. I'm adding them separately away from the ginger and garlic because I don't want these guys to burn while I cook them with onions. So while my onions are cooking, I'm gonna work on my ginger and garlic. By work on, I mean grate them. I'm using five cloves of garlic here because I love a garlic moment. If that scares you, you can take it down a notch, but I'm always gonna keep it up a notch. I'm just grating this on a microplane until they're nice and really fine. Grating the garlic this fine is gonna allow it to impart a lot of flavor onto this dal, especially when paired with those onions. I'm gonna be grating these forever. <laughs> Don't neglect your onions, okay? You wanna make sure these are happy too. Love garlic, I love garlic. No shame in my garlic game. Well, I'm adding five. Five cloves. We're starting off strong. This recipe is truly one of my favorite plant-based meal options because it's super flavorful, but it's also packed with protein from the lentils, really warming spices. It's one of my favorites. I can't believe I'm microplaning and also looking at a camera. <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> okay garlic there. Now it's time for our ginger. Again, we can't neglect our onions. We want them to be tender and translucent and a little bit golden before we add the garlic and the ginger, just so we have already some caramelization going on before we hit the garlic and onions. Microplaning the garlic and the ginger is nice because it almost forms this paste, so it's going to be really easy to cook in with our onions as well. Going with my ginger. Ginger is super healthy for you, and actually so is garlic. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> I know my heart is warm too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still grating this ginger. You can leave, I'll still be here grating ginger. 
This is why I have only one bicep on my right arm. <laughs> because of my ginger grating skills. When you cook the onions and garlic and ginger in a fat like olive oil, it's going to really break down those flavors so it becomes super flavorful and aromatic. We want that when we're pairing it with something like a dal. I'm all done with my ginger. Got my ginger garlic minced grated situation here. My onions are looking tender, translucent, a little golden around the edges. So now it's the perfect time to add my ginger and garlic. You can see how it's kind of a paste. This is gonna be great for that flavor. I'm gonna cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions until all of the flavors really incorporate and it starts to brown a little bit. It smells so good. Now that my garlic and ginger have started to brown in with the onions, I'm gonna add my masala for my spices. My favorites to use here are my cayenne, my turmeric, cumin, and coriander. It's really important that you do roast these spices because you don't want that raw smell or that raw taste. You want it to be super well browned so that it's aromatic. It smells so good. Now that my masala smells really nice, <laughs> excuse me. Now that my masala smells really nice and toasty, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste here because I really like to impart that really deep tomato flavor. And when you brown this tomato paste, it's gonna taste so good. When you're cooking the tomato paste, you want it to turn a very deep, dark red brick color. And again, nobody likes that raw tomato taste or smell, so you wanna really cook it through. Now that I've cooked my tomato paste in with my masala, it's time to add my crushed tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes here. There is no shame here. I love a canned tomato. I love convenience. You can use diced tomatoes as well. I love a canned tomato moment. I think especially if you're cooking for one, there's no reason why you shouldn't use what's already in your pantry. You want to cook these tomatoes for about three to five minutes until they reduce and darken in color. Cooking the tomatoes in with the onions, garlic, ginger, and spices is going to allow it to be a lot more flavorful. Lentils themselves don't have a ton of flavor on their own, so that's why adding all of these different ingredients and spices is gonna be really delicious for the actual dal itself. I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and pepper here. Now I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. And now we're gonna add some coconut milk. Instead of using a cream or a ghee or a butter, we're using coconut milk to give that same really delicious creamy flavor but without the dairy. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. We're just waiting. We're a little impatient, but we're waiting. <laughs> we're almost there. We're making progress. I love adding coconut milk to lentils because it makes them super creamy. It looks like we're boiling. Now that we're boiling and in business, I'm gonna reduce to a simmer and let it cook for five more minutes. Mmm, smells so good. Now we're gonna add our lentils. We're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes until the lentils are soft and the curry gets really nice and thick. It looks so creamy already. Just wait till it's done though. All right, see you later. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, Boom. Yes, 
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? been about 30 minutes, so you know what that means. My doll should be ready. It's looking so nice, so thick and delicious, but there are a couple more things that I wanna add. I'm gonna add in a little bit of sneaky spinach. This is not really traditional, but I do like to sneak some greens in where I can. Just chopped it up. Gonna add that straight in there and stir it up until it wilts. going in there. So you're just gonna stir the spinach in until it wilts. Look at how thick that is. It looks so good. And the green adds some nice contrast to the red and yellow lentils, so it looks really aesthetically pleasing as well. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm also gonna add some fresh lemon juice, just for some acidity. You've got a lot of heavy flavors here, so it's really nice to add a bit of tang at the end. Straight into my pot. We love a little lemon zing. Mix that lemon juice straight in there. I'm gonna finish this all off by adding some fresh cilantro. The tender stems are okay, but I like to remove the thicker stems because those are a bit more bitter. You can totally chop this if you'd like, but I'm just gonna tear it roughly. So I kind of like those big pieces of cilantro. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. Keyword almost. And now it's time for me to serve myself. This doll is super versatile because you can eat it straight up as a soup, or you can also serve it with some naan or some rice. Look at how thick that is too. Ooh, it's so creamy. Here's my sneaky spinach. Can't leave them behind. And then to garnish, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cilantro on top. Just a little for the picture, you know? This looks so pretty. I have to send a picture to my mom. She's gonna be so proud of me. Oh, and I gotta get that naan and rice in there too. This is such a party for one. Like, I love this for me. This is an amazing dish because it stores really well too, so you can totally freeze it or keep it in the fridge for up to a week. I think it is time for me to taste it. I'm gonna go in straight up. Mmm. I think my mom and I need to have a doll off. It was really good. I think this would impress her. Don't mind me while I take another few bites of this doll, but next, I'm gonna show you a kale salad that you are absolutely going to love. Mmm, so good. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is the week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. Is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We began our Cross America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent 
hunger was in your own community? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You might be thinking, another kale salad? Sama, did we really need another kale salad? And to that, I say yes, we need this one. It is my favorite creamy, crunchy, savory kale salad that's really gonna make you want to eat your greens. The first step that we're gonna do to make this salad is make our croutons. This is a great way to use up any of your leftover stale bread. Your stale bread is not destined for the trash, it's destined to be croutons. All right, here's my loaf of bread. I'm just gonna slice this up, dice it a bit, and then we're gonna season it. When you're slicing bread, always remember to use a serrated knife so that it can cut through the bread a lot easier. So I really like nice, thick, and crunchy croutons, so I'm gonna cut the bread slices pretty thick so we can get it there. Should be good. Now I'm just gonna dice up these slices of bread. There's nothing better than a crouton in a salad. It really just adds that nice, crunchy, savory element. Plus, I will really just eat bread like whenever I can get an opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Sourdough croutons are my favorite because it's got that nice tang and with the savory elements that we're gonna add, like the spices, it's gonna be so good. I'm one of those people that likes the end piece of a loaf of bread. They exist, I'm one of them. Now that I've got my croutons, all I'm gonna do is drizzle them with some olive oil and then season with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Seasoning with some salt. Some pepper. You can use your favorite seasonings here as well. But I love these three. Now I'm just gonna toss them. And you know what, this is a dinner for one, me being the one. So I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. Make sure the olive oil and spices really nicely coat the bread. These look nice and evenly seasoned, so now I'm just gonna transfer them to my parchment lined pan. I wanna make sure that these are nice and spread out so they get a really crisp and even bake. So I might even reserve some of these to bake off later so I can get that nice crisp crouton. Now, I'm just gonna throw them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you stir them once during baking. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right, I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. 
Well, guess what? My croutons are done. They look nice and golden and crisp. So I'm just gonna let them hang out and cool while I make my dressing. For the base of my salad dressing, I'm using tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, it's simply sesame seeds that have been ground up into a paste that's similar in texture to a peanut butter. It is my favorite savory grounding base for sauces and dressings. To my tahini, I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard, just for a bit of flavor. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, just a little. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this dressing to balance out the earthiness of the tahini. I also love a little tang in my dressings. It's gonna be so good. You want your salad dressing to be really bright and flavorful, especially when we're pairing it with a tougher green like a kale. All right, my lemon is in. I'm gonna whisk this a bit. Now I'm gonna add some of my spices. Got some freshly ground black pepper. Some salt. And for a little bit of spice, this seems to be the trend, some red pepper flakes. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. You'll notice that this dressing is starting to seize, which means that it's becoming a little bit difficult to mix. So all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cold water to help everything come together. You can add more or less water to get the dressing to your desired consistency. To me, a tahini-based dressing is really similar to a Caesar dressing, so I really like to use it on kale because there's nothing better than a really delicious kale Caesar. Look at how creamy this is. And no dairy. This looks really delicious and creamy to me. So I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on my kale. To prepare my kale, all I'm gonna do is remove these tough stems. I don't love these stems because they're a little bit too fibrous, so I really don't want them at my party. You can just tear it straight off and discard the stems. You could use a knife to chop this up, but tearing it is a lot more fun. Kale is a really good salad green because it's got all of these ridges that allow the dressing to really get all up in there. See ya. I like to keep the kale in bigger pieces here because when I marinate it in the dressing, it's gonna wilt down a little. I'm a kale whisperer. We're making kale fun again. Really. You thought you didn't need another kale salad? You were wrong. This is the only kale salad you'll ever need. And I'm not biased at all. This is completely impartial. It's not like this is my favorite kale salad or anything. Again, you could have definitely used a knife, but I just made the life choice not to. It's a lot more fun to tear it. Just gonna add my kale to my bowl. And this is where this dinner for one party gets really fun. I get to become a kale masseuse. I'm gonna add this dressing into my kale and just massage it so that the dressing gets all up into the ridges of the kale. Pouring that dressing straight in there. Okay. And now I'm just gonna use my hands, they are clean, and massage my kale. Massaging your kale is super important because it helps to break down those tough fibers in the kale and it really gets the dressing all evenly coated inside the kale. Look at it. The dressing is already coating it super nicely and it's becoming even softer. Okay, I got a little bit too excited massaging the kale so now I'm gonna go rinse my hands off. The kale has really had a nice massage. It's feeling super zen. So it's time to set it aside and I'm gonna prepare my add-ins. So I'm adding some tomatoes into the salad to add those really nice bursts of sweetness and it's gonna complement both the kale and the dressing really nicely. You can use grape tomatoes here, you can use cherry tomatoes. I find that these are a lot nicer and sweeter so that's why it's gonna be a great complement to this kale salad. That kale is so lucky though, it got a super long massage. <laughs> 
My favorite part about this kale salad is that you've got a lot of crunchy elements like these sunflower seeds and the croutons and some creamy elements like these beans and avocado. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice my avocado. So pretty. To dice this, I'm gonna dice it in the skin. So I'm just going to create the dicing inside so it makes it a lot easier to scoop right out and into my salad. I'm creating little hashtags in honor of hashtag cooking. And then I'm gonna add into my salad. Scoop it straight out. Make sure you get all the way to the peel, to the skin, so that you can remove the avocado easily, like so. <laughs> okay, this avocado is a bit resistant. It's fine. <laughs> all right, another half. Now we're moving on to another creamy component, my beans. These are gonna be really delicious because they're gonna add some protein, but also be super velvety and creamy in the salad. Add these straight in. I'm using white beans or cannellini beans here, but you can use whatever bean you'd like. Now I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds for another crunchy textural element. I'm gonna reserve some for the top. You can even use pumpkin seeds here if you'd like. And finally, for my croutons. Perhaps the reason you're interested in the salad in the first place? So these guys? I won't tell. I'm like kind of there with you. I'm just kidding, I love everything in the salad. I'm gonna reserve some croutons for the top as well, just to get that crunchiness. Now I'm gonna toss. Now I'm just gonna toss my salad together. There's so many fun elements going on here. It's a very exciting salad. And it's kind of pretty too. You got the tomatoes, which are nice and bright. Avocado. To finish it off, I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds on top. We're a little bit about aesthetics here. Not gonna front and some croutons too. And this is my kale salad dinner for one, which also means that I can eat out of this bowl and no one's really gonna know or care because it's just me. This is such a glamorous kale salad that I cannot eat it without taking a picture first. This will inspire any kale hater or kale skeptic to eat their kale, I promise. Just try it out. Now it's my turn to try it out. And even if I don't finish this all right now, this stores super well because it's just gonna marinate in its dressing for longer and get even more flavorful. Here I go. You just gotta get a little bit of everything. Some of the kale, the crouton, the tomato, maybe it's too much for me to get a bit of everything, but I'm gonna try. Okay. I really am trying to get a bit of everything and it's not gonna work. Will it work? Okay. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, Crunch from the sunflower seeds. Wait, I need a crouton. <laughs> really crunchy. <laughs> so good. Can you hear that? You can hear that? Mmm. You know what? I think they're gonna be a lot of kale converts after they try the salad. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m.
These are the hands behind Community Loaves, a special project to donate home-baked bread to local food banks in Seattle. The group of almost 500 home bakers is led by Catherine Curley, a college administrator and avid home baker who has transformed her garage to function as a hub for twice monthly bread collection. Bread's been around for a long time. It's four simple ingredients, flour, water, salt, yeast. And each time someone discovers it for the first time, it's like magic. What started out as a 19 loaf donation at the start of the pandemic has grown to a recent donation of more than 1,300 loaves. Carloads of bread are collected and donated to Hopelink, an area food bank that has seen a surging demand during the pandemic. Matthew Campbell is their associate director of food programs. I, mean, I think of my childhood, my baba, my grandma used to make the best homemade bread. That reminds me of this. You can see smiles through masks. You still can. You can see the eyes go up. 600, 700 loaves of bread going out now. That's 600, 700 smiles. And it's just awesome. You, it makes a difference. If I divide this up. Catherine and some of her original group of bakers developed the formula for their honey oat loaf bread including local flour that's sourced from wheat grown in Washington State. A batch is four, and we want them to donate three, and we encourage them to keep one, to feed them and thank them for their time, while at the same time paying it forward through the gift of the bread. He's 76 years old. Did he try it? Yeah, he loves it. For Sarah Ganholm, being a part of Community Loaves has allowed her to connect with her elderly father during the pandemic. He's never made anything but chocolate chip cookies in his oven or a turkey. It just seemed like a natural thing for us to get on Zoom together and do this together. My dad now has bread and now he's really proud of this new skill and all of a sudden he's giving back to a community in a way that he's never done in his life. This dough already has a lot of development. Catherine didn't start baking bread until later in life, oh but she has God. fond childhood memories of watching her grandma Ruth bake bread and desserts. Sadly, her grandma, Ruth Weissen, passed away in August at the age of 105. So when I visited her this summer, this project was going, and she wasn't eating very much, but she would eat bread. And she said to me that if the project had existed when she was baking bread, that she would have loved to participate. For Thanksgiving last year, Community Loaves adapted their bread recipe to make special dinner rolls, and then they topped off 2020 with a bang, donating almost 4,000 pecan finger cookies for the winter holiday season, a favorite recipe of Catherine's grandma, Ruth. As for 2021, Catherine's greatest hope is that other cities can find a way to copy what Community Loaves has been doing in Seattle. It's restored my faith in the collective good that we can actually do. We can be more self-determinant even in the face of uh, the pandemic. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, the The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? telling someone, hey, we believe in you and we want to give you an opportunity, the confidence that comes from that. 
oftentimes a month of being here, their confidence has at least doubled. Our goal is to be a stepping stone to help them get to their ultimate goal. I'm Julie Sullivan Los, co founder of Ground Up Nut Butters. And I'm Carolyn Cesario, co founder of Ground Up Nut Butters. Check you guys out. Teamwork happening over here. Our mission at Ground Up is to employ women overcoming adversity and provide job skills training. One more. Okay, I think I can fit one more in. How many almonds is it? Do you guys know? I can pull. I don't have my phone out. Oh, plenty. So women come from backgrounds of homelessness, battling mental illness, transitioning out of the sex industry, and so out of incarceration. We have a six to nine month employment training program, and we partner with different organizations in the city and get referrals for the women that we hire. And truly success looks different for each person that does join our team. And what's unique is it started with the mission and vision first before the product was even around. So I was living in Uganda overseeing a training program for about 160 women doing paper bead jewelry work. And I just saw the power of providing someone an opportunity and giving them an income and the impact that that could have not only in their life, but that could trickle down into their family and their community. So I moved back home to Portland, dead set on starting a company. And I really believe that business is a powerful tool for social good. So I knew that I wanted to start a for-profit business. I was working running marketing at Seiko Designs, an ethical fashion brand, and we hired on Julie to do customer care for us. At the time, I was making nut butters on the side of my job without any intention to do anything more with it because I didn't want to start just another food business. Don't get me wrong, our product is great, but I didn't feel like that was enough motivation to actually start a business. And um, when I met Julie, and she had this passion for an employment training program vision, which really was very similar to the company that we were both working for, so we both already kind of had a heart for that. Um, when we met and she was looking for a product, it was just kind of like fate that the two came together. We had only known each other for three months and then we were like, let's do this. Yeah. We like really hit the ground <laughs> running and the two of us like were very type A go-getters. So we were just like, I think it was March and we were yeah. like, cool, by like June we'll be in all the farmer's markets in Portland and we'll see how this goes. Little did we know you have to sign up for those markets in like November of the prior year. <laughs> It's very competitive in Portland, but yeah, so we just hit the ground running and started selling in as many places as we could. All the while making it out of Carolyn's home with small food processors. Yeah. I think we made... Accepting payments via Venmo. Yep, I think we made about two jars every 30 minutes, so really efficient. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hand wrote the lab like every single label, which is why our, our jars still now have my handwriting on them, because it's like an ode to that. All of our nut butters are peanut, dairy, and gluten-free, just sweetened with honey. We don't use any other added sugars or oils, so that's super different than a lot of products on the market that have added palm oil or sugars in them. You can pick up a label and be like, oh, I recognize every ingredient in this jar. We don't want to put anything on the market that we ourselves wouldn't be eating every day. I think being a woman in business it can be difficult because it's hard for people to take you seriously. You get a lot of people that are trying to give you advice and talk down to you and kind of questioning what you're doing. And I think it was really hard in the beginning. It especially being like, you're crazy, you're gonna start a business and also from the forefront, you're gonna start with a training program working with women overcoming adversity. And to us, there's no other way. And so I think to really be able to show other businesses and to show the community there's another way of doing business and it's powerful. It's not only powerful for us but it's powerful for customers that they can be a part of the story and they can pick up a jar and say like hey there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world but I get to be part of something bigger. My name is Jamel Dawson and I work for Ground Up PDX. I heard about Ground Up through uh, Central City Concern. They're an agency that helps people with barriers for employment. Yeah. I do this till 5 o'clock. I, lo I love it. I lost my home um, in August of 2018. I mean, I was living from couch to couch and I couldn't get a job and um, I was in another lifestyle and I just got tired of it but I didn't know 
where to go. I didn't know what to do. Julie and Carolyn are encouraging, uplifting, and very positive. They give me hope. Every morning when I see them, they just make me smile because it's another day here. I help in the kitchen on Tuesday and Wednesdays. Um, I help Phil. I'm pretty fast at it. <laughs> I love it. This place has given me confidence because I was in a dark place last year. I didn't have any hope. This gave me confidence that I can do something different. And I'm, I'm looking forward to anything that comes after this. Oh, I didn't realize we had some over here. Yeah, I put some on that in for you and then some on this in. My name is Tiffany Christensen and I work for Ground Up. I'm the fulfillment supervisor and I'm a production assistant. So I mainly focus on online orders that are coming in two days a week I get to help out in the kitchen and doing production. I love being in the kitchen, that's where I started. So anytime I can get back into the kitchen, I'm happy. Before I started working at Ground Up, I was living in a shelter um, for about six months. And the whole time I was trying to find employment and I was also battling my mental health. It was, it was hard, very, very hard. And when Ground Up came, I felt like I was ready to try to start working again because it was very hard to look for a job. Nobody wanted to hire anyone that was living in a shelter, which is very sad. Roundup has given me confidence. Once I started, my whole attitude on life changed. So creamy. So much better with the new elements. Wow. Yeah, so much better. <laughs> That's great. People really do care about our product and love our product and love what we do. It makes me proud to work hard and that has helped me. It's, there's more purpose to it. Whereas the jobs I've had in the past, I didn't really feel like I was doing anything meaningful. It was going to work and then coming home. A very endless cycle of pain and misery. And that didn't help any of my mental health at all. So that's why Ground Up is so great with all the positivity and the helping others, the purpose. It's, it's a wonderful feeling. Good morning, team. Good morning. How's everyone doing? We're doing five batches of Chunky, which we've already done one, and we did some of the Smooth as well, which... Julie and Carolyn are huge in my life, and there's nothing I can do or say that is ever gonna be enough to, for my gratitude for them. I would love to be just half of what they are, their attitude, just to let us know that it's okay. Everything's gonna be all right. Life, there's mistakes. It's no big deal. Just learn from it and keep going. So. They're, I'm getting chills just talking about it. Sorry, they, 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 it tears me up. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't need to be sorry. It's happy tears. It yeah. begins with five pounds, it yeah. turns into 10 pounds, it turns into 50 pounds a day. Yes, and they're ordering every two weeks. That's yeah. Cool. So. <laughs> Ground up on three. One, two, three. Ground up! <laughs> Giving back to the community is really part of our DNA at Ground Up and truly a part of both Carolyn and I. Personally, I believe if you're going to be working at something, you know, 50 hours a week, why not have it be something that's helping to do good? If I'm going to spend so much of my time putting energy into growing something, I want it to also be helping other people. So I guess in that sense, it's partially selfish what we're doing, because I think we both get fulfillment out of seeing women on our team grow and thrive in this environment. Um, but it's also clearly helping them in a lot of ways as well. We truly believe, and I truly believe, that just being that drop in the ocean, just mm -hmm. like helping one person, that trickle-down effect is powerful like by buying a jar, you can be a part of the story. We get really excited to share with other companies about what it's like to have a job training program. And I think we're also they're very honest with others about, yeah, it is, it's a lot more work, it's a lot more time, it's a lot more patience, but it is 100% worth it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? 
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man with the Richards. All right, it just did too. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. All right, we are back with Motivational Monday and a woman who may inspire us to lace up our running shoes. I'm so jazzed about this yeah. story. Ultra marathoner Myrna Valerio is on a mission not only to conquer daunting long-distance races, but to prove that being fit is not one-size-fits-all. Take a look. I don't do races to win. I do races so I can be around other runners and experience the joy that it is being in community with people, watching everybody, work towards their goals. Myrna Valerio is challenging society's notion of what it means to be fit. I am about moving joyfully in whatever body you have. One finish line at a time. I'm an ultra marathoner, which means I run races of 26.2 miles and up. Myrna first fell in love with being active as an athlete in high school, but her career and starting a family got in the way. I was killing it at work. I was so good at my job but I was not killing it with myself. In fact, I was killing myself. That's when I had the health scare. Tell me about that, because I know that that was a huge moment of impact for you. I started having chest pains where I thought I was having a heart attack. I saw a cardiologist who told me that I was gonna die if I didn't change my lifestyle. So she started running. I really had to stop and think about what it is that I wanted for myself, what it is that I wanted for my son and husband. The very next day after the cardiologist visit, I got back on my treadmill and it was very painful. It took me very, very long to, to run a mile. That first mile prompted why? I promised to give myself some grace um, and some space <laughs> and patience so that I could continue to work towards my goal. That one mile soon became one of thousands. After upping the ante and going from a mile to 5Ks and 10Ks, I always wanted to see what was next. And so that the 10Ks turned into half marathons, which turned into a full marathon. Myrna began documenting her running journey on a blog she named Fat Girl Running. It wasn't meant to be anything. And her honest and humorous posts became a hit on social media. So tell me, how did the Myrna Vader come about? My colleague said, hey, why don't we make your handle Myrna Vader because you Myrna Vader us, you motivate us. And I think it really embodies who I am. Soon after that, the Myrna Vader was featured on magazine covers and a book deal soon followed. Each thing just like blew my world apart in a really good way, spurring the conversation about whether or not you could be fat and fit. Talk to me about using the word fat and why that's so important to you. Stereotypically, fat people are slovenly, they're not ambitious, they're sloppy. I am none of those. What I would like to do is make people comfortable with the fact that there are lots of different types of bodies out there. Myrna believes you can be fit regardless of your size. I can be a size 18, 20 and run 14 ultra marathons, right? And 11 marathons. So does that mean I'm not fit? Being fat does not mean that you can't do these things. I mean, I am a living example of all of this. Has the most rewarding part of all of this been the people that you are motivating and so many people who you have touched with your journey? It is absolutely the most rewarding thing. When they talk about people who are influencers, I think that's what it is in the real sense of the word. People who influence people positively because they see you doing it and they see you trying and that's, that's what I'm gonna keep doing. 
The Murnivator. And yeah. I mean, speaking about motivation, our producer, Nick, who did a great job on that, she motivated him mm. to start running. And so she's touched oh. so many people. And I love what she said about give yourself grace and space yeah. and mm. patience. Like, it's so important to put that in. And of course, um, before you embark on a fitness journey of your own, whatever it may be, of course, check with your doctor to see what your body can handle. But her, just the idea of just getting started, and you're not going to blow anything out of the water, but just that first step is what's most important. Toughest part, but once you get through that, yep. right? In anything in life, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just exactly. that first step. Like when people are cleansing their closet, I'm like, just start with one drawer. Like yeah. anything yeah. is just that first step. So, Murnivator. Yes. Love <laughs> that. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Four good people to bed, you know, right? Five, seven, four, three. There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the way, the All right, it just did too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You never know when you uh, get diagnosed with ALS. I was strong. Um, I spoke clearly. I was active um no uh hmm. yeah things have changed And letting everyone know that I was diagnosed with ALS approximately a month and a half ago. The last thing I want is for you to feel sorry for me. I feel great and I am going to fight through this with a smile on my face. I was dealt these cards and I'm going to play them the very best I can. When I was diagnosed, I'm by no means an artist. But when I did paint, it was very therapeutic for me. Once I got my bearings together and said there's nothing I could do about it, I decided to take a positive approach and form an organization to help others when your health changes, your mind, you know, everything about you changes and just the way you look at life and the way you want to uh, help others in the way that that was the biggest thing with paper here is what we've enjoyed most is our family and we want others to not think about having to pay their mortgage when they have ALS to really be able to enjoy their family and their time together and that's really what paper here stands for. Don't be afraid to use plenty of paint on your brush. And if you need more, squirt more out. But why are you working on the paint scene? I wanted to introduce my ex. In London. And I'm Jen. I wanted to say hi and thank you so much for supporting us. And we appreciate it so much. We've raised over a hundred thousand dollars during COVID 
is something really special, especially because I brought on board Trevor Stopper, which is also an ALS patient, and we have collaborated together. So we're actually with Paint for a Cure. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is Eric and Trevor. Yes, I know. Right <laughs> Fight together. Yeah. What we've created, paint for a cure, in such a short period of time, that's a very good accomplishment. And I hope it will continue on for years to come, um, helping families. That you, that you can help you out. And we're presenting it to you on behalf of this gentleman, Eric Weinbrenner. If you'd like to see him. I am currently financially able to provide for my family. Unfortunately, that's not the case for everybody. The biggest thing that I'm scared about is not being here for my <laughs> For the family. I mean it's not uh, it's not what's to come with his health, it's not being here and watching his kids grow up or you know, growing old together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's devastating. It's almost you go through the loss before you realize the gain that you have and the time that you really do have together is just so much more important than you found as a family. So we don't take that for granted anymore because of this diagnosis and knowing how um, Every minute is so important. Yeah, because there are a lot of struggles in life, especially right now. But you know what? Things always turn around. They might be bad now, but if you have a positive mindset and if you work hard and you really set your mind to something, you will conquer that. Now y'all ready for a little boost? Yes. Here we go. Two teenage boys were best friends in Ohio, but they had not seen each other in person for two years after one of them moved to Kansas. So one day, the Kansas friend took a little road trip to, to surprise his buddy. So he stood outside his pal's home. He FaceTimed him. He pretended he was still in Kansas. Then he said, hey, why don't you go outside and just take a look around? So here's what happened. Oh my God! <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, these two <laughs> first cute. met in middle school. One of them had no place to sit in the cafeteria. The other one said, hey, Come sit with us, and oh the rest is history. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. Have a good, have a good bro hug. Yeah. yeah. Have a good bro hug. All right, you want a boost, kid? A Monday boost. Here we go. Okay, one year ago, there was a little girl named Naomi. She lost her teddy bear while visiting Glacier National Park in Montana. It was the bear that her new parents had sent her while they were waiting to adopt her from an orphanage in Ethiopia. Unknown to them, park ranger Tom Mazarisi found the teddy kept him in his patrol truck as a mascot. Wow. Fast forward one year later, a family friend happens to go to the park. She spots Teddy on the ranger's dashboard. Uh, she took a picture. Naomi confirmed, yep, they had the right bear. And soon she and Teddy were happily Talk about uh, no uh, accidents. No what? accidents. That's the theme of the show. That's incredible. Yeah. There is a show that is about to enter its final season. 
And I know you're bummed because we're all bummed. But this is us. When it started, it came in like a rocket ship. It was exactly what the country needed at the exact right time. Nothing captivated a nation. No television show had captivated a nation like This Is Us. This Is Us brought us back to ourselves. It made us cry. It made us laugh. It made us feel things. It made us take our tough exterior and like peel it away. We watched people be brave. We thought, man, I wonder if I could be brave like them. Um, it's a beautiful show. It's in its sixth season, and we are so fortunate to have the entire cast. And joining us in this early moment of the show, and we're going to have the whole cast on, so don't worry. If you don't hear your favorite character right away, they're here somewhere. I've got Miss Mandy Moore, who's joining us. I've got Milo Ventimiglia, who's joining us. He's out there. And I think John Fuertes is, but there's John. And I think Milo's going to pop on. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Good, how are you? Hey, Hoda, how are you? Hello. Okay, Hi. I got to say, this has got, I mean, look, goodbyes are hard. And they're real hard <laughs> for the viewer, okay? So, Mandy, as, as someone who's been on this show from its inception and watched this crazy rocket ship take off to outer <laughs> space, I mean, how does it feel in this moment to realize we're we're finally here at the end? Very bittersweet. I feel like our emotions sort of echo, hopefully, what the audience's emotions are, or what they're going through right now. I mean, we all are a family and we have been from the very beginning. It's just, it's the best job I've ever had. And I, I love these people so, so truly, so deeply. I love the work. It's, it's going to be a big change. I love how if you, when you Google This Is Us, it gives you a lot of like, <laughs> all the theories like there, I mean, you guys know, I mean, on Reddit, I don't know where, but there are a million theories on why were you sitting like that? Why were you leaning in like that? Why weren't you in that scene? What happened in well, that scene? Have you, I mean, this is a microscope. People are picking things apart. Are they, um, Milo, are they right? Are they, are they sometimes, are you noticing that the viewers are predicting pretty well? Um, predicting what's coming. Yeah. I haven't paid too much attention to it. Oh. I honestly, I haven't. We're, we're in the thick of it. We're, in the middle of the season, we're eyes in versus looking out and uh -huh. wondering what's going on, popping our heads out of the hole that we're in. Not a hole, a bad hole. It's a great hole. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's, there's a lot to be read into. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that people can look into. But what, what I also know is there's a lot of nuance from a talented group of people that just kind of happens. Mm -hmm. And it may feel very familiar to someone watching the show. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a wonderful coincidence because yes. when you have wonderful scripts and you have wonderful actors, I mean, top to bottom, this cast is amazing. Like the, the one, you know, kind of sad moment for me in this whole process is I don't get to work with everybody, truly work with everybody as much as I would have liked to. Mm -hmm. But you have such a cast, such a, a, a writing staff, a crew, and it just, these little moments are just magic and they happen. I think they feel very familiar to what we experience in life. And I just, again, I'm, I'm grateful and I think it's wonderful. But John, Hoda, to yeah. piggyback on that, sorry, yeah. it, things are very intentional. Like our writers and Dan Fogelman, our, our creator, like things are are done with a real purpose. And so I think if people are reading into them, they're, they're you know, they're right to do that because um, I think there are little clues in a way that are sprinkled throughout the entirety of the series. And it's not to fool anybody. It's just what I love is this analogy of we're telling the story of this family. It's just out of order. It's like putting in, you know, old home videos just completely out of sequence. You're not seeing mm -hmm. them sort of, um, you know, uh, contiguously. So it's, uh, it is it is all very intentional, though. Does it impact your life? I feel like we learn life lessons when we watch it and we have brave conversations that maybe we wouldn't have had, but you watch someone have one and you're like, wow, I can I could do that, man. Let me try that. Do you, has it impacted at all how you live? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I, I think cherishing the relationships that we build over time is something that I've been able to um, take away from the show. You know, I this cast that I work with, I've never ever been a part of a cast that's so gracious, so so uh, generous, so supportive so loving. Um, like Mandy said earlier, we are a family. 
And I've never experienced that on a cast before. And, you know, that's, it's, it's a really special feeling for me. And it takes, it, you know, it definitely translates into the relationships that I have outside of the show mm -hmm. and making sure that I, that I cherish those and, and, and put work into those like I, I want to with this cast. Well, you guys, I can't, I don't even, I, I don't like to discuss the end of anything only because it's going to be painful for uh, a lot of people watching, but you guys are incredible. We're going to bring on some of your other castmates. We'll take a little quick break. Uh, I want to thank Mandy, John, and Milo all for hanging with us for a little bit. And please join us again at the end. We want to see the, all your shining faces, okay? We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back. We've got, uh, who's next? Sterling. Sterling's next. Sterling K. Brown is next. And we've got Justin Hartley. We'll be back right after this quick break on The Hoda Show. Welcome back. We're back to the Hoda Show. We've got Sterling K. Brown and Justin Hartley. Now, we just did a whole segment on the Today Show about work friends and then friends friends. There are yeah. work friends and then there are friends friends. Y'all are not just work friends. Y'all are friends friends. Am I right? This is my brother from my Mandy mother here. Uh, <laughs> we, I mean, we're, and I, we're, and we're, I love this human, yes. We're yeah, blind we're connected. Till, till it ends, yeah. So what yeah. is it? Like, tell me about the magic, Justin. What is it? Oh gosh, you know, uh, if I if if I'm gonna be frank, uh, it's 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 his how authentic the man is. Mm -hmm. He's um, and th this this is like a, sort of across the board with the whole cast. But um, if we're speaking specifically of Sterling, he is the most genuine, authentic, kind, real, true um, human being you'll ever meet. And what's not to love? And uh, and he's and he's uh, he's handsome. <laughs> handsome. <laughs> and he's All funny. Right. I love him. I love him. I love him. All right, Sterling, it's your turn. Uh, you know, as they say in the streets, oh, the game recognize game. Like you gotta, in order to see something in somebody else, you gotta be that thing yourself. Um, Justin and I, from the beginning, I think have a similar way of approaching the work. Um, you show up ready to go. Um, there is a sense of humor that I think that is kindred in, in the two of us. And, and, and we're both open people, meaning like if he, if he asks me a question, like I answer it. And if I ask him a question, he answers it. And I think we were able to just come close very quickly because we're both open people, like foibles and all. It can be good, bad or ugly, but we're not afraid to share with each other. And so that's that's what I love about my brother. I want to know, Sterling, OK, what what did it mean? when we saw that headline off, it was, it looked like a New York magazine to me. I couldn't really tell, but yeah, you, said that you were, you were a rising star. It wasn't like a rising star in like the Enquirer. This was like real rising stars. So yeah. go ahead and just tell us what is that, what that's yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a great storyline that will be uh, unveiled and throughout the course of the season. I hope everybody watches. It's very exciting. I it can is. tell you this, what, what can I tell you? It, it is politically related. Right. Okay. You know, because he's a councilman in the 12th district in Philadelphia. Um, I think Dan has had like this idea for a while that he's been planting the seeds for. And I hope that people find it fulfilling. I can't. Hoda, you know, I can't tell you everything. You know what? I know. Watch. These are 
by the way, this show has been so wildly popular because y'all are still traps because no matter what we do, it is, nobody says anything and we all wait and we look for our little clues. Like we always do. What did that mean? Why did Justin yeah. look like that? Why was Sterling doing that? Like you, we, we play, we play that game. Um, Justin, what was your, what was that, that line that you were saying in the mirror, uh, just before the wedding? What was that? Um, do you remember? Yeah, when, well, when, uh, it was the, before the, the wedding. Uh, which, it, ended which wedding? Up, it ended up being Chrissy's wedding, but oh, in the mirror, I think. He, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, no, I, I wish I could uh, tell you that, but what happens <laughs> yeah. is with with when you're Sterling on a show knows. is you get to, Sterling. Sterling knows it. No, no, I don't. I'm trying to remember too because it was a bit of a misdirect. It was yeah. something. Wasn't it something from a movie? Yeah, and well, it were... was. It was from. It was from. Um, um, Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Yeah. Princess Bride. The marriage. That, that was the, was the, the marriage. marriage. Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, but yeah, There, yeah, there was yeah, something yeah. else. You're right. Where it was. A, it was a little bit of a. Mystery, you were right? trying to fake us out, but we were yeah. kind of bumming about your love life. Well, look. I mean, here's the deal. The guy. Um, he's he's been through a few things and. And he's uh, he's going to find he's going to find uh, a, I, I hope I hope he finds a perfect um, a perfect spot for his heart. Um, and, I, and I think he will. He's a good man. He, he's uh, if he was a real, he would be uh, next to Sterling. He'd be my best friend. He's oh. uh, no, he, he's he's a he's a great guy. I love Kevin. And, and I think he's I think he's going to he's going to find his way. Why I think they- Kevin's. I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. I was yeah. going to say Kevin's arc. I think has been one of the most interesting ones for me to watch to like, he's always sort of judged and people see him as being sort of self-absorbed and self-centered, et cetera, but he's actually quite kind and quite giving. Like even his relationship with Randall, they'll go from moments of just of like being magnets that repel each other. And then he's the person that who's there for his brother, whether mm-hmm. it was when he was having his panic attack back in the day when he like wanted mm-hmm. the Jordans, and he he lied about the Jordans. He's like, dude, just sign the thing and go. Like, what are you tri- what are you tripping off of? Like, yeah. I lo- he is actually quite nurturing, even though his facade seems distant. Why do you think he had trouble finding love? Why did your character have trouble? Gosh, I mean, I, th- I think it's it's timing, and if you're if he wasn't ready, uh, he and I are similar in certain ways, and then so different in other ways. Um, I think I grew up just a sort of little keyhole look into my life. I grew up quick, like really fast, really young. I, 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 I matured early mentally. I think that Kevin, I think it took him some time to be honest with you. Uh, and, and, um, and I think we've seen him sort of mature through the past, what, four, five, six seasons yeah. uh, into, a, into to go from sort of like a guy in a room who is uncomfortable in his own skin to someone who walks in and kind of knows who he is and, for better or worse. And I think that's, that's, that's where we're sort of finding him. So how on earth do you say goodbye to something so good? How do you, Mm. how do you even begin to do that? I think that the the privilege of, um, of having something come along in your life that you will miss Mm. is, uh, is something to to think about. A lot of people uh, don't get that. And Mm -hmm. we all have that. And the privilege of, of mm. having something come along that you will truly miss. Mm. I will keep in contact with every single person, uh, whether they like it or not. Uh, but uh, but I but I will miss I will miss the capacity in which we 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 are uh, we are a family right now, and, and that we're you know working together and all that for sure. Yes, Sterling. Uh, I, it's more like a ta ta for now. It's not like you know gone forever because these people are such a part of my life whether or not the story gets to continue you you grieve that like it's been a beautiful story in a time in which the world and the country has been greatly divided it seems like it was something that was able to bring people Mm -hmm. together and i truly cherish that uh on a more cosmic uh meta level i believe when god closes one door you know something else will be available for you that is for you uh, and so I look forward to what the universe has in store next. But once I get to like the last month, mm-hmm. the last couple episodes, and you have like the last scene with so and so, the last scene with mm. your children, when those things start to happen, mm. like I was just watching the Harry Potter reunion, <laughs> and me and my wife last night, I was like, they've grown up so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that's, I'm sure it'll feel the same way. When I watch my kids and when I see the young versions of us, Justin, like Niles and Logan and Hannah, it's like, you've had a, the privilege of watching young children become young adults. Mm. When I see uh, the, the people who play Lyric and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and Eris and, and, and Faith who play my three children on the show, they were babies. Mm. Yeah. Now they're young ladies. Yeah. It's such a privilege that like, I carry that warm thing with me forever. Mm -hmm. And to, in that regard, it'll never be over. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we love y'all. We're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to bring in Chrissy Metz and Chris Sullivan. We've got the whole cast of This Is Us as we kick off final season, season number six of what is arguably one of the best shows on television for the last six seasons. We'll be back on The Hoda Show right after this. Welcome back to uh, this epic, beautiful edition of the Hodo Show where we are talking This Is Us. I can't believe it, man. I can't believe we're talking season six. I can't believe I'm talking to Chrissy Metz and Chris Sullivan. And more than all of it, Kate and Toby, how <laughs> dare you do this to us people? So Chrissy, let's start, let's start. Because, you know, when you and Toby started, there were a few, you might have given us a few hints that all wasn't perfect in paradise, obviously. Right. But what, what was it, what's it like to approach this final season knowing that it's not the two of you trying to make it work? Honestly, it's difficult. Um, as an actor, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, you know, the new guy in town. And I'm like, ah, oh, but I feel like even as Chrissy, I'm like, where's my Chris? You know, like, where's my Chris Sullivan, who was just held my hand throughout the whole series. And so it's really hard for me because I know that I'm going to be missing him. So I'm already missing him, even though he's in, you know, the present moment. And, you know, you feel gross. You're like, oh my gosh. But what, of course, we're going to come to find out, of course, through the story is that, you know, people impact our lives and change our lives. And whether they're for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, um, Kate and Toby will always have, always have each other in their lives. And that's what's really beautiful about relationships, even if they're not each other's forever person but it's i know a tough pill to swallow even for me even for for the actors so i'm uh, sorry i'm okay. sorry i think they are trying they're trying very hard and i think that that you know dan and 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 the writers have kind of made this agreement with the audience that we're going to investigate every aspect of relationship in this show. and just because things like you were saying, the uh, Chrissy, that there's a season. Just because things don't last forever doesn't mean they don't work out. You know, you can sometimes, sometimes it's just not the right time and, and the right place and the right people. 
and you have to you have to evolve and, and move forward or or everybody just kind of sinks to the bottom. We've been reflecting on this show and its impact. And for you guys, can you just tell us what it feels like to be on this set? Because peeking in, watching the show feels really warm and fuzzy for us. But what, what is it like for you guys to work together? Because we talked about there are work friends and then there are friends friends. I feel like you all are all friends friends for real. Yeah, I think it's 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 kind of statistically unreal how well we all get along. You know, this is a it's, it can be a high stress job, especially with with a lot of the, you know, like we were saying, the conversations that we're having to have, the the um, topics of of these scenes can be pretty heavy, and I think I think a sense of humor is is what kind of threads everything together, and so it's just a good time. I mean, we're just you what no matter what you're seeing, whether the scene is lighthearted or heavy, you're, you're seeing people enjoy each other. And I think mm -hmm. that's why it connects. Yeah. How about for you, Chrissy? Because, I mean, this was, I know that you were like thinking about, well, maybe, maybe acting is not my gig. And then lo and behold, acting is so your gig. Mm -hmm. oh, well, thank you. Um, and like I said, Chris really did hold my hand. I, I'll never forget the first episode, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, yeah, you do. I'm like, no, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, you do. And it always, um, don't wait to get emotional. It always um, warms my heart when I think about it because I'm just so grateful. And that's how everybody in the cast has been. You know, like I am the new girl in school and I haven't had, you know, years of experience and a huge long resume, um, but I never felt like I was an outcast. And it's just been such a, um, such a surprise and like, you know, something I was going to give up on. <laughs> and so I'm mm -hmm. like, what? And it completely changed my life in every single way. And I could not be more grateful and, you know, more emotional about it. And that's just who I am. But literally they are the, the funniest people. And they, like Chris was saying, the irony of, of everybody, like, I, you cannot keep a straight face and especially with Chris here, <laughs> anybody with John with Sterling with Justin with it's like it's too much sometimes I'm like I have to walk away I got okay away. who is the first person to lose it like you're on the set everyone you've got it whatever who's the first person who cracks up I don't maybe Sterling he, he's well, Sterling Sterling can hold a straight like I think we all ironically and 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 this makeup is a surprise we are all our kryptonite is Justin Hartley Justin Hartley, what? what? He yeah. is. There's a twinkle in his eye when he looks at you. That he can, <laughs> like a little flutter in his eyelash, and it sends me. I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can you tell us, Chrissy, about your storyline? So, there's new love, obviously, yeah. but yeah. what? What do? What are we allowed to speak about when it comes to that? Well, I mean, obviously, we we saw that mm -hmm. Kate is married mm -hmm. to a new guy, and and of course, we're gonna see the the unraveling of Kate and Toby's relationship. But like Chris was saying earlier, like they really are trying. It's not for not trying and really exhausting all efforts. And, you know, we get to see how it's not anyone's fault. You know, it's, mm. it's not, it's not because they aren't trying or they, they aren't in love, but sometimes, you know, life, if you don't grow together, I think you grow apart and that's okay. Um, but we're going to, we're going to see that. And obviously Kate and Rebecca's relationship is stronger than ever. And that's what makes it even more mm -hmm. difficult to, to watch because we see her decline. So there's a lot going on. We're going to take a quick break, bring the whole cast back. Just do a quick, Hey, a little quick round Robin. We're back with the cast of this is us on the Hoda show coming up right after this.
back, everybody, to the Hoda Show. <laughs> I'm with the cast of This Is Us. You know how we talked about earlier there are work friends and friend friends? I'm looking at friend friends. I'm looking at friends that are going to be together for the long haul. This is season six. It's going to be wrapping up at the end of this season. But I know that we're going to have a revisit. Um, I think it was Sterling who pointed out when uh, the Harry Potter cast came back together, they were all blubbering. And so that's what's going to happen with you all. Y'all are going to be back together many years from now. We'll be watching you on an NBC special and you'll be hugging and loving and we'll all be remembering what a beautiful, beautiful show you had. So I'm going to ask a couple of quick, uh, quick questions. OK, I want to know. Just just raise or say the name of the person who this applies to. Who is the most likely to laugh during a scene? Chris. Chris Sullivan. Chris? Chris Sullivan. Chris Sullivan. I agree with that. Yeah. All right, Chris, what, 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 what is that? Are you, the, are you the, the jokester or the just the guy who laughs? I, you know, I, I, I try not to waste anybody's time. I try yeah. to keep moving, uh, but I, tr I, tr I really try to be connected to like ravenous joy who is most likely to cry on the set what hey, chrissy oh chrissy chrissy is most so. likely to okay. yeah I, I think so right chrissy or yeah. maybe sterling you might be uh, uh, we're, we're close i mean we related to each other so it happens that way <laughs> right. i would say it goes i would say it's like mandy chrissy sterling are all in a, in a group <laughs> together That's all right I, yeah <laughs> Most likely to sing on the set. Ooh, a lot of us. I mean, Chris sings. Chrissy sings. Mandy, Mandy surprisingly sings. doesn't sing. What? That much no. On the set. What? Why? You see that? Mandy. No, no I, way. Mandy never does. I'm like, she's so focused, and I'm like, I know. What is she gonna sing for us? She doesn't a lot, but Chris. Come Chrissy, on, you guys. I feel like Mandy I have to sing. give it up to Sterling again. I feel like you would be the most likely to sing, Sterl. Yeah, I, I have like part of the vocal warm up is just me humming and like what? doing. Give me your stuff. vocal warm up. Let's hear. I mean, it's like you know. I mean, <laughs> what can I do for you? Oh God! <laughs> Put me on the spot. I don't know. Uh, are making midnight music in the moonlight. See, I told you it's Chris. That's where it is. I'll start singing something like over and over again. All right. Yeah. Pretty musical cast. Yeah. All right. I, I know, do not sing. I, I know, and I know Chrissy's got some good pipes. Mandy, what was your most fun day of filming, do you think? Most fun day of filming? That's tough. That uh Everything is fun. I mean, I, I feel like we've all like really just appreciated every moment as it's unfolded. Like it, it this has just been such an incredible ride. Mm -hmm. I can say something, Hoda, real quick. This, it may not be my favorite all the time, but like we had a moment this year where we were all doing a scene together and Mandy Moore did something so extraordinary that like at the table, I just started clapping. Oh. Like we were, we were sitting at a table oh. and I just started clapping. Because I was like, this sister is bringing the MF pain over <laughs> like, like nobody's business. I had to like get up, walk away from the table, shake myself out. I looked at like Chrissy, I looked at Justin, it's like, that just happened. And she kept doing it again and again. Wow. And again. So One of the greatest good. performances I've ever. Amazing. That's oh. Mandy Moore though. Ever. That's right. Mandy, that's, right. that's Mandy Moore. Okay, that's my Mandy eyes Moore. are, look at my, my eyes are watering. I don't even know what the scene was. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, it's going to rip you apart. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Boy, when you feel yeah. love, it's big. You guys, I just want to thank you all. The cast of This Is Us, you guys have changed our lives. Uh, I cannot believe it's the end of season six that we're, we're, about to, we're about to approach season six, the end of your series. Know that you all have our hearts forever. Uh, we can't wait for the end. So I just want to say thank you again. And that was a perfect and beautiful way to end. I can't. Will we see that scene, or is it already is it already aired, or is or we get no, to it's, it's coming okay, up. Okay, good, good. So I'm going to remember this moment when I watch it. Yes, mm. guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, thanks for everything you gave us. We really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you, Hoda. Love y'all. Thank you, Hoda. Thank you for listening to the Hoda Show, guys. Catch. This is us, season six. You don't want to miss it. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to a jam packed Pop Star Plus to begin your week. Coming up, we've got the scoop from the star 
of a new and very sweet Netflix film called The Royal Treatment. Also, Jen is chatting with Mark Brown, the man behind Arthur as the beloved children's show based on his book Nears Its End. Plus, we're taking it back to 2001 with a little set visit to Law & Order SVU with Mariska Hargitay and Christopher Maloney. But first, of course, here's your pop start. Get right to it, and we're going to start with Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas. Congratulations are in order, because the couple has just welcomed their first child together. On Friday, Priyanka and Nick revealing the good news in a joint statement on Instagram, writing, We are overjoyed to confirm that we've welcomed a baby via surrogate. We respectfully ask for privacy during this special time. This comes just weeks after Chopra told Vanity Fair that children were a big desire for their future. And the mm -hmm. couple who just celebrated their third wedding anniversary last month has not yet shared the name or gender of their newborn, but we are still wishing their mm -hmm. growing family nothing but the best. Great people. Next up, James Bond, Uncle Al. Here we go. Now okay. that Daniel Craig has wrapped up his run as 007 in No Time to Die, the hunt is on for the next James Bond. On a recent episode of Deadline's Crew Call podcast, producer Barbara Broakley revealing that fan favorite contender Idris Elba might be in the running for the iconic role. When asked if there have been any conversations with Idris about taking the part, she said, well, I'm friends with him and he's a magnificent actor. It's been part of the conversation, but it's always difficult to have that conversation when you have someone in the seat. Oh, she goes okay. on to say that after audiences have had a little more time to see Daniel Craig's last performance, they'll start working on filling that role. I've said it since 1978. Idris <laughs> Elba Please. needs to be the next that's 007. It. Have that. Period. Have that. Not even close. Yeah, let's have, have, that. That. The let's one. have the conversation. We've let's go. We've been saying this forever. Yeah. Come on. We're ready. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah, just announce it already. Wrap it up. Next up, John Hamm, the Emmy-winning actor, has been cast <laughs> in some pretty big roles over the years. Have you seen his ad? Yes. Yeah, so good. So good. <laughs> uh, Mad Men, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Baby Driver. Ooh. Well, there's one role that uh, John Hamm hasn't gotten. He's made his feelings very clear about how he feels about it in the new ad for Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, Apple. Did I do something to offend you? I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, Billie Eilish, Tom Holland, Chris Evans? <laughs> what about John Hamm? Seriously? Denzel, Francis McDormand, Momoa, Snoopy. Snoopy. Two Mahershalas? Kind of feels like cheating. <laughs> Could have cloned me! <laughs> the whole ad is really oh, funny. It's is. like a so Super Bowl ad, right? great. It's great. Finally, Betty White. The newly released video shows the legendary actress just 11 days before she passed away in December, shared to White's Facebook page. The message was originally recorded as a thank you to her fans on what would have been her 100th birthday. Here's a peek of that. I just want to thank you all for your love and support over the years. Thank you so much and stick around. In the caption, the page administrator thanks fans for continuing the actress's legacy by donating in honor of the hashtag Betty White Challenge, which, by the way, raised almost $13 million wow. for animal uh, shelters and rescues. And they call it Popstar Plus for a reason. We've got a few more items for you. And we'll start with Kate McKinnon, the SNL star, has transformed into Tiger King's Carol Baskin in the first teaser for Peacock's Joe vs. Carol. McKinnon starring opposite John Cameron Mitchell, who looks great, as he takes on the role of the former Big Cat owner Joe Exotic. The upcoming eight-episode series is set to explore their explosive relationship between Baskin and Exotic, made famous in Netflix's 2020 hit docu-series. And here's a peek. Whoever you are, coming for you. If she wants to mess with me, I can mess with her. I got a message for Carol Baskin. If you sit down and talk, we can come to an understanding. <laughs> So it's war. It's war. Okay, that looks good. Joe versus Carol. Start stre streaming on Peacock again on March 3rd. Finally, Rachel Ziegler, the Golden Globe winning actress and New Jersey native, stopped by Britain's Graham Norton show on Friday, and she revealed the incredible revolving door of celebrity guests who just happened to swing by the West Side Story set when they were shooting Steven Spielberg's recent remake. Bruce Springsteen came three times and he came to see me sing I Feel Pretty and he had his, his aviators on. He's like, gotta see the Jersey girl sing. And I just peed my pants. <laughs> Was that you? still the same day that Barack Obama came as well? Barack Obama came. A, a, I like that he gets third billing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also how, appearing. It goes Bruce, Steve, Barack. And it's, I'm sitting there on the couch and Michelle Obama's next to me and Bruce Springsteen's there. <laughs> and Barack Obama and John Williams and Steven Spielberg 
And John Williams is talking to Gustavo Dudamel, and John turns to Barack Obama and says, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what does it matter what he thinks? He was the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> the boss and the Obamas? Talk about pressure for a first-time actor. Kudos, by the way, to Rachel, who's been keeping her cool and just continuing to rack up all the awards this season. Well-deserved. Those are your headlines for today. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to the star of Netflix's newest rom-com, The Royal Treatment. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Prince. Today shows newest fan. A little Al Roker. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. As a teenager actor and singer, Laura Moreno starred on the Disney Channel show Austin and Alley. Well, now she's all grown up starring and singing in a new Netflix film called The Royal Treatment. Here's a look. I just got a call to do the hair and makeup for the royal wedding. <gasps> for $50,000. It's like a glass slip, but money. The Royal Treatment is a rom-com movie that essentially is about my character Izzy, who's a New York hairstylist. Izzy gets the opportunity to do the hair and makeup for the royal wedding of Prince Thomas of Lavania, played by the lovely Mina Masood. And maybe sparks fly between Prince Thomas and Izzy. I play Izzy and honestly, she has been one of my favorite characters that I've ever played uh, for a few reasons. Every character that I've played, I always find some part of myself in the character. But Izzy, for sure, I really, really identify with. She speaks her mind. I very much connect with her uh, sense of we all have to treat each other well and respect each other. And when you don't, that makes me mad. Um, Izzy also works really hard. She's from New York. She has, uh, uh, you know, her mother and her grandmother, her Nona, uh, which I also is very uh, connected to. I have a lot of family in New York on my dad's side who were all born, uh, most of them were born in Italy. One paper, please. Hot Prince visit makes temperatures rise in the city. <laughs> Seriously though, what's with his hair? I worked with a New York dialect coach. I did so much work on this accent and it still is, it's gonna be jarring for people who know me. May I introduce Prince Thomas? I'm Izzy of 183rd Street. Nina's so lovely. He was on the top of my list of playing Prince Thomas. So I was so excited we got him. We really bonded while we were in quarantine. You have to quarantine for two weeks in New Zealand. So we were in different hotels, we were actually in different cities, but we were like FaceTiming every day and going over lines, but also getting to know each other, which was really, really nice. The town car is trailing us. One, two, three, stop. I think the regular girl meets Prince of a made of country, especially, is a subgenre I love. And I think for us, we very much wanted to pay homage to that. Movies have come before that, um, us in that subgenre, in that vein. You know, I think we also kind of poked fun in moments in that genre as well. Honestly, I think we just really didn't take ourselves too seriously. Our goal was to have fun 
and we really did. We had such an amazing time. The cast, the crew, everyone a part of it. Obviously, we even mentioned Genovia in the movie. I do think the movie is obviously plot-wise quite different from Princess Diaries, but I, I mean, that is one of my favorite movies and I'm obsessed with Anne Hathaway, so that is truly the biggest compliment someone can give. <laughs> so, Dance With You, the song that actually is already out in the world and is in our last scene of the movie and in the end credits, that was something I very much specifically wrote for the film. And I wanted to write a song that I thought, you know, encompassed what the vibe of the movie was, which is joy, which is happiness. Worst Kind of Hurt, which is the song that comes out the same day as The Royal Treatment. And I am singing it with Rabel, who I absolutely love. This is the first time for me that I have the singer artist part of my career, personality, whatever you want to say, and my acting part and the film and television part so synergized um, while also feeling quite separate. Because obviously I've done music in projects before, Austin and Ali, A Cinderella Story, Christmas Wish, but the music was very um, like part of the plot. Like I sang while you're watching and I definitely didn't want that to happen. So why are you just a hairdresser? Just? Truth is, I'd love nothing more than to do something else. I think our movie does deal with some pretty important concepts like finding your identity within yourself versus your identity within your family. The fact that no matter who you are, you could be the prince of a made-up country, you could be a New York hairstylist, but you have the ability to make change in the world and change in your community. And that's something I'm really proud about that the movie embodies and, and shows. And I love that about Izzy. So I, I hope that anyone who watches it I, feels inspired by our message and more than anything, feels just real happy after. By the way, The Royal Treatment is now streaming on Netflix. Coming up, Jenna's conversation with the driving force behind children's favorite for decades. We're talking about the one and only Arthur. That's next. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital. You rarely see. This is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> it was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today shows newest fan. This is the Al Roker. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Prince. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. And we're back on Popstar Plus. Author and illustrator Mark Brown gave us the wonderful world of Arthur. He created the beloved book series and TV show that we all know and love. So we sat down with Jenna to share some memories ahead of the show's 25th and final season. We're back. This is 
It's 8.35 on this Monday morning with Jenna on this, this wonderful kind of day. <laughs> of course, that's the theme song that you're hearing. The theme song for that beloved children's TV series. And uh, Arthur, Arthur. Yes. you got to sit down with the author of Arthur. I know, say that 10 times. <laughs> I know, I was practicing. <laughs> uh, a great a story about an eight-year-old aardvark. No, don't y'all love yeah. that aardvark? Yeah, good morning. This year marks 45 years since the first book hit shelves, as well as the 25th and final season of Arthur on PBS Kids. I spoke with Mark about how the series has impacted kids and adults, probably all of us, for decades, and how it changed his life. Never in a million years did I imagine I would go on all of these adventures because of Arthur. Arthur is the eight-year-old aardvark who navigates life and faces real issues that real kids often encounter. Author Mark Brown is the genius behind the character and his cast of friends like Buster, Francine, and Binky. But as the 25th and final new season of Arthur approaches, it's hard to imagine that the series almost never happened. <gasps> the book was very much inspired by a bedtime story for your own son. I had just lost a teaching job and I went home that night and my son asked for a bedtime story. And I said, oh, I've had a terrible day. I really don't feel like telling you a story tonight. And he said, oh, come on, Dad. Maybe it'll make you feel better. Ugh. And he was right. More than 125 books later, combined with the longest-running animated kids series in the U.S. Hey, hey! What a wonderful kind of day. Arthur has made a lasting impact on millions of children and adults. The best thing that Arthur has done for kids all these years is tell them the truth. I think kids trust him, and I value that trust that I have with kids. Is there a little bit of you in Arthur, or a lot of you? Okay, I guess the secret's out. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of me in Arthur. As a seven-time Emmy winner, the show has not only received awards, but strong praise for the diversity and inclusion represented throughout the series. Mr. Ratburn is married. I still can't believe it. You were making sure kids, no matter who they were, felt like they weren't alone. Was that the purpose or that's just sort of what happened? When PBS came to me originally, their agenda was to make kids want to read. And then we found, you know, all of these subjects that we could deal with that would be helpful to kids. Guest stars from John Lewis, Jane Lynch, to Alex Trebek have all appeared on the show. But it's who hasn't been on Arthur that's causing a stir on the internet. There are millions of memes that say he looks just like John Legend. They do, they're doppelgangers. Yeah, who knows, maybe we'll do something together. Are you telling me that maybe, maybe? Oh, now you're going into uncharted territory here. <laughs> do you ever just marvel at the fact that this character is so iconic in the fabric of our culture that Chance the Rapper is singing the theme song. Believe in yourself, but that's the place we start. And I do you ever just think, wow? Yeah, I do every day. Another cultural icon inspired the title of his latest Arthur book, Believe in Yourself, his dear friend and mentor, Mr. Fred Rogers. He said, Mark, every child needs just one person to believe in them, to make it in the world. And boy, that stuck with me. As the series approaches the end, many young fans anxiously await to find out how Arthur's story will unfold. We will address the most often asked questions that kids ask us about Arthur and his friends. While feeling bittersweet that this chapter is coming to a close, Brown is forever grateful to the little aardvark that came into his life. You did many jobs before this. You were a truck driver, you were a teacher. Short order cook. You did all these different things. I got fired so many times from all these jobs. I feel like the luckiest guy in the world because I'm doing this job that I love. It's almost like Arthur found you. Do you ever feel that way? I do. I mean, if it weren't for that bedtime story that night, it changed my life. Oh, okay, so this was so much the fabric of my childhood, but also he, he I love talking to him because he's so right that our kids 
can inspire us. Yes. You know, seeing the world through their eyes, he went on to have this incredible career. And he says, this is not the last you're going to see of Arthur. Other projects are in the works. I, I'm guessing a movie with John Legend. I thought a podcast oh, I'm Arthur. Moving a, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, moving, I'm guessing a movie with John Legend. That's my guess. But also, episodes will obviously yeah. still continue to air on PBS Kids. But the 25th and final new season premieres on February 21st. Arthur found him. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. What a sweet man. Yeah. yeah. A lovely, Don't lovely love. man. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. too. Thanks, Thanks Jenna. Thank y'all. Thanks, CBH. Oh, we also want to mention, y'all, that Mark's latest book, Believe in Yourself, What We Learned from Arthur, is out tomorrow. And you can pre-order a copy right now at today.com slash shop. From one fan favorite to another, SVU watchers, you're going to really enjoy what we have from our Vault series. That's next. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, the answer's The Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Law & Order SVU is a pop star favorite. Uh, it's been on our minds lately. You know, certainly, will that romance ever be in the cards for Olivia Benson and Elliot Stabler? I don't know. But today, we're flashing back to the long-running show's sophomore season. This will take us back to 2001. We found a moment from our vault when Uncle Al visited the cast on set. While many new television programs have already bit the dust, audiences seem to be sticking by some old favorites. Now in its sophomore season, Law & Order Special Victims Unit has really caught on on Friday nights. And our own Al Roker got a chance to go on location with the show right here in New York City. Background and action. I gotta tell you, this, this is kind of exciting. We're down yep. in the meat packing district. Is there something exciting about doing a show here in New York City. Absolutely. So there's no need to ask. Is this how you like it? For an actor to be in the streets of New York, you're not on a back lot, you're not in a predictable, boring city that we've seen a million times on TV. So it's very inspiring. I could go on doing this as long as the check's clear. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing like it. It's this energy that just uh, infuses your soul with what a certain je ne sais, hmm. You know Genesee, what Genesee, what you looking at? Nah, you... <laughs> what is this, open season? A few drinks, a little smoke, a bunch of guys wet down, a couple dozen women. One of the hallmarks of a Dick Wolf series seems to be, you know, sort of a, an evolving cast. Yeah. And you've got a new cast member. Yes, with, with, uh, two. Two new cast Stephanie members. Stephanie March and Ice-T. It is in Bishop Tutuola. Does it change the dynamic? of what you guys do? Um, no, it hasn't. It's been actually a really great, both of them have been quite uh, interesting additions for the show. It's always good to get uh, new blood in there, see what they're gonna, uh, they're gonna bring to the table. Ice brings a whole different energy to the show. He's really, he's been really fun for me personally to get to know because he's got such a unique vibe. He brings a, a street sensibility to it, a guy with a slight swagger and the kind of the, the, the street credibility. Sooner or later, she's gonna have to face the facts that her husband's a rapist. Why? She doesn't have to face it unless we prove it. And we don't want her pushed there by Harper Anderson. Street justice is always bloody. If anything, I think I may bring a little broader demographic to this show. What do you mean? I'm probably the only person on this show that kids six years old know who I am. So Ice-T brings that youth into it. And you are the knot in the pit of your stomach. You're teamed up with the character John Munch. The two of you together is, is an interesting concept. 
it was a very easy connection. You know, he's cool, I'm cool. Only thing problem with working with Richard is he took all the black outfits, so I can't wear black. <laughs> you know, getting a chance to play the kind of cop that I guess I would be if I was a policeman is a great thing. So this is a good job for me. You wouldn't expect Munch to have a partner like Ice-T, and I, and I think it's working out great. We both enjoy working together. Uh, they're not overly chummy, and they're not at each other's throats like a corny bickering thing. It's just like two guys who are kind of cynical and dead set on Fortunately, in, in our line of work, Special Victims Unit, the bad guys are all really bad guys. There's no ambiguity here. Ah. Nice tackle. You won't Do you think you were received pretty openly here? When you first get to a show, you got to feel everybody out, you know? And uh, everybody on this show is very cool. No, no problems, no issues. Uh, I just had a problem early, I think, was really just trying to figure out how they wanted me to play this detective. And then Dick Wolf just came in and said, just be Ice-T. Just be Ice-T. That's what we want you to do. When you say, well, be Ice-T, but it, it's not, I would think, it's not that easy. I mean, it's just, it, what you're acting, your well, acting is still your it's, acting. It's, it's, the question is, when you say be hip, how hip do you want me? Because I can take it so hip you couldn't understand a word I said. <laughs> <laughs> I could take it so hip, you wouldn't even understand the dialogue. You need a translation. Yeah, you need the translation. But they don't know. I think some people don't know how hip I can get. So, yeah, I can get so hip, you wouldn't understand. I'd be like saying, yo, yo, word, yo, check this out, man. We got to jump this skeezer right quick. She's tripping out here in the streets, man. I'm about to blow his wig back. You'd be like, what did he just what say? What did he say? <laughs> Son of a... What? It's that guy from the apartment. He said he never heard of her. Yeah, I've been really lucky to work with other actors who are really good, who really enjoy what they're doing. But generally speaking, it's been uh, an ideal work situation. In this show, it's so much about the ensemble. Yes. The story's mm -hmm. the star. It's, it's, it's more, it seems like it's more of an actor's program. You're correct. I think the, uh, the crime is a star. You know, the, the, the viewers tune in to see, okay, let's watch uh, our heroes follow the crime. But we all really love each other. Uh, as people and as performers, so that makes it such a pleasure. So you don't mind handing the ball off, and uh, everyone gets their, their chance to bat. Guess what? She's dead. Fresh gash to the arm definitely feels mortal. Your second season. Are you ready to be in here for, for the long haul? Yeah, I sort of uh, see what life throws at me, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I sort of trust the process. Who knows where I'll be in three years, but... Um, but I love, I love New York, and uh, I love this character, and I love uh, my cast mates, and, and so I'm pretty happy right now. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You're Is that difficult as an actor coming into something that's already up and running? It's good to come into something that's already winning. Coming into something that's losing and then asked to help pick it up, that's scary, but coming into something that's already winning, that's a blessing. So fun to travel back in time to think. That show, 21 years later, still going strong. Love it, SVU. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. We've got another episode of Popstar Plus brewing. It'll be here tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your okay. favorite character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy cow cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day.
at our friends. And today, all day land, we hope you guys had a really good weekend. You're probably really tired because they were probably watching mm -hmm. football up late like all of us. But we're going to kick off another big week on our show today in 30. Let us break down the headlines for you. We're going to start with a look at the escalating tension with Russia as the Biden administration orders embassy families out of Ukraine and ways moving U.S. troops into the region. We're going to bring you a full report from the White House. Plus, uh, people are saying it was the best weekend ever for NFL playoff action. I'm going to emphasize ever. We're going to take you inside the drama, the comeback the heartbreak and oh yeah the upset says the road to the Super Bowl is narrowed to the final four it was epic and then on the third hour our friend oh, Dylan yes. she's back she's back from maternity leave we're gonna show you how everybody caught up we'll find out how life's going as a mom of three boys my three sons <laughs> she's got them all packed in one room amazing and she's Got a new edition of Cooking with Cal to share. And then Jenna. When, when, when are Ollie and Rusty going to get they, in the by title? By the way, they're going to start getting jealous. Yeah. It's time. Uh, Jen and I got a chance to catch up with the lovely Kate Hudson. And like Dylan, she too is a mom of three. She's raising a teenager, a tween, and a toddler all at the same time. We had a lot of fun catching up with her about her new adventure. So let's get it started. We've got right. a lot to get to. Time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We'll start with NBC senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell. Kelly, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. Officials tell us the president is looking at plans by air, by sea, and on the ground to fortify NATO allies in Eastern Europe, not send these assets into Ukraine. The mission is to deter Putin and protect our NATO partners. And I'm told conversations have begun with the countries that could receive this U.S. military support, which may be one tangible sign that the president's decision-making process is moving forward. This morning, President Biden weighing a new military operation to counter Vladimir Putin and bolster NATO allies in Europe. At Camp David Saturday, the president was briefed on potential U.S. troop and equipment movements to NATO countries in Eastern Europe. Administration officials say Defense Secretary Austin, on video conference, laid out options for the president to act before or after any Russian invasion of Ukraine. A decision could come within days. We'll continue to build up uh, the defense and deterrence that uh, is necessary. And a new warning, Americans in Ukraine ordered home, including families of embassy staff in Kyiv, and a voluntary departure for non-essential workers due to the continued threat of Russian military action. Let there be no doubt at all that if Putin makes this choice, Russia will pay a heavy price. Great Britain revealed its discovery of a brewing Russian plot to overthrow the democratically elected president of Ukraine and install a former Ukraine official close to Moscow. The U.S. called that deeply concerning and put Russia on notice. There is going to be a swift a severe and united response. While Putin has moved more than 100,000 Russian troops to Ukraine's border, the U.S. has delivered $200 million of lethal military aid to Ukraine. And negotiations continue. Lawmakers say sanctions should not wait. We do need to go ahead and impose sanctions on Russia now. We need to show them that we mean business. And while President Biden considers his military options, today NATO's Secretary General announced that the Alliance of Nations is putting some forces on standby, sending additional ships and fighter jets to Eastern Europe, and would welcome the support of other allies to contribute forces for deterrence. Savannah? All right, Kelly, thank you. We turn now to Jeremy Bash, a national security analyst for NBC News. He served as the chief of staff at both the CIA and the Defense Department. Jeremy, good morning to you. Good morning. So we heard overnight that NATO has announced moving military assets to the region. The U.S. is considering doing so. The State Department announces that Americans are urged to leave and families of diplomats are ordered to leave. Is this a significant escalation? How do you read the tea leaves here? Yeah, I think this means that the U.S. government has concluded, Savannah, that an invasion of Ukraine is imminent. You don't order the families of U.S. personnel in the embassy to leave unless you believe they have to get out of harm's way. And we're encouraging all Americans to leave the country. That, combined with these military deployments within NATO and additional troops to the region, means I believe that the Biden administration has concluded that all efforts to stop Putin at this point have basically failed. There are no off ramps. We have to get our forces postured for potential military conflict. And then how does it play out, Jeremy? What could potentially happen here? 
Well, look, I think if Putin does something, and I think everybody believes he will, then I think first and foremost, as I said, we've got to get our people out of harm's way. We've got to put more forces uh, aligned with our allies in Eastern Europe so that they know that we have their back because, of course, Ukraine is on the doorstep of NATO. And if Russia takes one step over that line into NATO, then under Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, we're duty-bound to defend those countries, and that means the U.S. and Russia are at war. But I think the next step are sanctions on Russia, and then, of course, we're going to be arming and helping the Ukrainians fight an insurgency against Russia. And that could be bloody battles in the streets of Ukraine that could go on for months, maybe years. The U.S. has threatened severe sanctions along with NATO. But if Putin has concluded or, or we have concluded that Putin's going to go in, uh, is it too late? I mean, obviously, he's doing so in the face of the threat of those sanctions. Well, it may be too late to stop him at this stage, but look, we want to prevent him from escalating once he goes in. And so I think sanctions and cyber efforts are very important to prevent from Putin from going up the escalatory ladder. And those sanctions are going to hurt him. His economy is in decline. His economy is very brittle. But make no mistake, Savannah, those sanctions also could hurt European countries and American companies. And so there are going to be a lot of people coming through Washington asking for exemptions to those sanctions. And over time, those sanctions will erode. And what about NATO's uh, alliance? There have been divisions divisions in NATO. The president openly spoke about those divisions. Will they stand united? And what are the competing considerations there? Yeah, it's a 30 nation alliance. So to get everybody on the same page is always a challenge. But I think NATO is unified under the concept that Russia can't force a country to redraw its borders by force. And it can't tell Ukraine that it can't be an ally with the West. And so NATO seems very aligned here, and I think they're going to stand strong. All right, Jeremy Bash, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just needs to. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast free wherever you get your podcasts. Ooh, the The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Everyone's been waiting for this one. It was a wild, amazing weekend of football, wasn't it? Yo, uh, epic. Yeah, epic. Best. And you stayed up. I did. Yeah. I'm sleepy this morning with yeah. a lot of folks around the country, I'm, I'm sure. Comebacks, heartbreaks, upsets. The playoffs, the divisional round had it all, including this wild finish between the Chiefs and Bills late last night. And another instant classic. This chapter in Tom Brady's storied career, although this one ended with a twist for the legendary quarterback, NBC Sam Brock is in Tampa Bay once again this morning for us, covering all of it. Hey, Sam. Craig, guys, good morning. This weekend was utter madness. I think at one point Hoda had a tweet with 11 exclamation points. And by the way, the Saints weren't even playing. Guys, this is the first time since 2009 that Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers both are not in the conference championships. The futures for both quarterbacks right now, Cloudy and as Savannah was saying earlier, the Chiefs and Bills scored 25 points in the final two minutes of regulation. An instant classic. There's ever been a better a more exciting weekend. Overnight, a playoff game for the ages. Oh my gosh, this is the most perfect quarterback play. The Bills and Chiefs back and forth in the final few minutes of the game. Down the middle to the end zone, and there it is! 
Gabriel Davis's fourth touchdown from Josh Allen, giving Buffalo the lead with just 13 seconds left. But incredibly, the Chiefs answering right back behind the arm of Patrick Mahomes. Setting up a game-tying 49-yard field goal to end regulation, and then this in overtime. Looking to the end zone for the win! I mean, it was a heck of a game. The young quarterback moving forward, while football's most famous face won't be playing in the conference championship. Even as Sunday had all the makings of a Tom Brady history-breaking comeback. Makes the catch, he's in for the score! 24 points, erased in just over a quarter. This is officially lunacy. Only for the Rams to convert a dagger deep shot and walk away with a W, prompting questions immediately about whether the 44-year-old Brady will return next season. I haven't put a lot of thought into it, so you know, we'll just take it day by day and see, and see where we're at. After two other game-ending field goals Saturday in Green Bay and Nashville, the Final Four is officially set. Bengals and Chiefs in the AFC, Niners and Rams in the NFC. With San Francisco sacking Aaron Rodgers' dreams of winning a second ring and adding a new dimension to his beautifully mysterious Green Bay future. I'll have conversations in the next week or so and, you know, start to contemplate after that. The faces of the NFL for years, Brady and Rodgers, preparing to give way to the new guard of Allen, Mahomes and Burrow. Though fans in Tampa are still expressing nothing but sheer awe at what they just witnessed from number 12. Have you ever seen anything like that? Absolutely not. That was incredible. And one immutable NFL law finally broken. Never bet against Brady. Brady does have one year left on his contract, guys, but even NFL insiders right now aren't exactly sure what's going to come next for number 12. And adding to the drama, more debate over the overtime rules because if the team that starts with the ball scores a touchdown on its opening drive, that's it, game over, meaning that a coin toss can play a massive role in the outcome of the game. And last night, it appears that it might have. Craig, yeah. Savannah Hoda, back well, to you. The problem is, Sam Buck, they were upset about the overtime rules before they made the Well, change. we're oh, going to call yeah. Roger Thank Goodell. You, Sam. Well, I know, yeah. but you're kind of yeah, happy. Yeah, you're a Chiefs fan, exactly. Won. And the rest of us are outraged. We're what? outraged. What? It's, it's like, oh, it's a great game. Well, let's just flip a coin. No, well. But you still have to score the touchdown. I know, but we yeah, should but call, why can't you call Roger Goodell. Don't well, you have his number? I don't think we want to call Roger about that. Here's the thing. To Sam's point, you did feel like you were watching a changing of the guard, though. Yeah. You know, like the like the new kids on the block. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Joe Burrow. I'm so excited about the Bengals. Let's go, let's Come go. On. Even Roker was watching oh, football I, all weekend. We watched football all so weekend long. Yes. Oh, we can't wait for the Super Bowl okay. on NBC Bowl. and Peacock. We, can you we're going. We've, we've got that Super we're Bowl. We're all yes. going. Oh, we're, we're going. Bowl, 56, oh, we're going, February baby. 13th. Oh, it's happening. Right. February 13th right here. We're going. We want to go. Yes. If you're going to let me know. Carson and the new twist tied to Adele's now postponed residency in Las Vegas. Yeah, so when Adele made that announcement, obviously fans were shocked. So over the weekend, the star did what she could to make him feel loved. NBC News now anchor Joe Fryer has more for us. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> we're already in Vegas when they got the news that Adele would be postponing her residency there. For some, it was a trip years in the making. So this weekend, the singer surprised some of them and promised the show would eventually go on. Adele has been living at the top of the charts. Had no time to choose. Starting Friday, she planned to take up residence at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace in Vegas for her hotly anticipated concert series. I'm really, really sorry. I'm really sorry. Last week, she shocked fans with a last minute announcement. COVID complications meant the show was being postponed. I'm so sorry, but my show ain't ready. Eleni Sabrakis has been trying to see Adele in concert for years, including 2017, when she flew to London, only to find out Adele was canceling her final performance there. And the Uber driver's name was Adele. And I was like, okay, this is the universe literally laughing in my face. This is a building. <laughs> when she got tickets to Adele's Vegas residency for Christmas, it finally felt like the laughing would stop. And then we fly to Vegas and she cancels her show again. These are Golden Circle tickets. She made a TikTok about her experience that went viral and caught the attention of someone on Adele's team. She was like, no, we loved it. And you know who else loved it? And like turns around her phone and it's Adele on FaceTime. I love you. I'm sorry. I love you. I just FaceTimed Adele. 
Adele promised to fly Eleni back to Vegas and bring her on stage once the show is rescheduled. Oh my God, it turns out that Adele canceling her show was the best thing that ever happened to me. Across the weekend, Adele surprised a number of fans with messages and calls. Oh my gosh, hi. Including Dominic Crisanino, who spoke with us from the airport before leaving town. He says what happened in Vegas certainly won't be staying there. Now I have this amazing story that I'll carry for the rest of my life. Good to see. No word yet, by the way, on when Adele's run at Caesars Palace is going to be rescheduled. All right, Joe, thank you. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. If Dylan is back, then that means it is also the return of <laughs> Everybody asked if Cooking with Cal was going to be back. Yes, yeah, we are back. still cooking up the, in the kitchen, and this time we are whipping up a Sicilian staple that will feed the whole family twice. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Pizza. No, <laughs> it's called scacciata. Scacciata. It's kind of like a meat pie. Normally, it's the perfect thing to have on football Sunday, and I don't add all these vegetables, but since we're going to eat this for dinner, we're making a little bit healthy. Just a little bit, okay? Just like one bit. Your favorite. No, remember, we have a trick. Look, we're going to put a wet paper towel. <laughs> Done. I'm ready to peel the carrots. Yeah. Okay. Zucchini time, zucchini time. Don't let it see. Cool. Nice. Cut as close to the edge as you can. Alright, now let's do the garlic. on a nice low heat because we don't want it to get crispy. We want it to get nice and soft. So we're going to use two types of cheeses. We've got Pecorino Romano and we've got Provolone. So instead of grating this, yes. we're going to cut it super small <laughs> and then it's all going to melt nice in the oven. Right now, since the veggies are nice and soft, we're going to add the pork. We're adding three pounds of pork. It sounds like a lot, but this is actually one of those recipes that if you just make all of this, you can freeze half of it. So the next time you make it, you just have to buy the pizza dough and the filling's already made. How are we like making real pizza? Well, we're making scacciata. Scacciata. Say it like real Italian, like scacciata. 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 
<laughs> Rub all that oil in. With what? With your hands. Is this how you really do it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I taste it? It's all oil. Who's there? A traffic cow. No! <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to drain some of this liquid and add the rest of the ingredients. But I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> oh, all of it? Like all of it goes to the top? All right, can you dump that cheese in here? Spread this all over. Not all the way to the edge, because we're going to roll up the edge, okay? I'm going to take the top dough. That's mine. Ooh, a thumbs up. I love it. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash Yay, remember! Aww. Oh, so cute. Cute. <laughs> Look at He's getting ready. He's been expressing interest in uh -huh. you know, cooking more. You know, I made brownies the other day. He wanted to stir it. Uh -oh. and, you know, co stars. Mm, I, wow. I know. Yeah, First of all, the recipe looks battle. yummy. And there are a lot of people like me who are like, Cal's getting so big. Like his I conversation. Know, you haven't seen him in a few months. And wow. he's like, he's legit now. But this is like one of those recipes where you, you can hide the vegetables for the kids. And it's That's like right. pizza, but you don't feel so You feel good yum. about it. So yeah. Go. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just needs to. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We are back with actress and entrepreneur Kate Hudson. Okay, we got a game we want to play with you. It's called Sip or Spill. Oh, okay, yeah. We got some juicy. I love a game. You love a game. <laughs> we love By the way, game. we love your hair. Did you, what, what's going on there? Oh, did you have a crimper? Yes. How did you do that? This is my new thing, guys. What, what is I it? I take a shower and I put braids and I put like four <gasps> braids and I leave it for like two days and then I just have Wait, what? this hair. <laughs> Wait. And then you brush it and Wait. you kind of like. That is the you coolest. Did. We were going to ask who did it, and now we know you did it. Oh, my well, God. Well, no, I had a little help with it this morning okay. with an amazing hairdresser, okay. I will okay. say. But okay. it looks uh, really cute. But, guys, I wish I was in the studio. I, I will we say I missed that. By the way, we didn't even know I, you were in New York right here. I said, I think she's in New York. Can't she come I'm down? Here. Oh, and I was like, I just want to come down and hang out. That's yeah, just, how you, you know. feel. Okay, well, next come, time. Yeah, we're going to do time. it. Okay, so here's some questions, and you can either spill the tea or if you don't feel like spilling oh. it, you can take a sip of something. What do you, yeah, you, do you got, have something you to drink there? Right. Are you a coffee drinker? What's the tea, guys? What's okay, the let's tea? go. All right. Um, All right. I've got something. To okay, drink. good. Okay. okay, good. Here we go. Okay, what I'll would you it. say is your fiance's Danny's most annoying habit? <laughs> 
sorry. <laughs> crypto. <laughs> crypto. Oh, yes. Oh, since, for, since before it was a thing. Cool. I mean, always in it, been in it since 2016, <laughs> and it's a whole thing. Okay. Um, I don't know what it is. Nope. I don't know anything about it. But you'd but, rather not yeah. hear about Bitcoin. I don't blame you. We, no one even knows what it is. No. Will you ask him one day to explain it to us? <laughs> okay. We should, though. Yeah. We should, ladies. I'm right. learning. I'm okay. learning. Okay. You I'll once said... That Billy, am I pronouncing last name? Crewed up yeah. was your best on Crude screen up. kiss. Who was your worst? Ooh. <sighs> it's okay. You I can can't. Tell. Okay. Uh, you can tell uh, us. We won't tell Oh, anybody. she's sipping the tea. Oh, she's sipping. Oh, no. Bummer, bummer. You okay. know what? There's she's no kind. tea there, guys. She's okay. compassionate. Oh, okay, okay, let's here we go. <laughs> if you want to have a wild girls' night out, which celebrity girlfriend would you call? Oh. I've got a couple, guys. Okay, give us a couple. <laughs> give us a couple. Um, a wild night out, I would go, there's a couple people. <laughs> I would call Cara Delevingne. Yes. I would call Jen Aniston. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Jen. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? I would call, and I'd call Reese. I'd call the morning show, guys, oh. and Billy. I'd Billy, call them too? All. What? Yeah, I'd call them. Wait, morning can show. we do That's a thing do. where your morning show friends and us, us morning, morning show, show friends <laughs> go get margaritas? What do we, we have can, to do? We're that? fun. That sounds like you. I, I will say the the most fun is my mom. I mean, yes. like, like, oh. like you know, I I got I got mom on speed dial. If there's someone to go out with, it's my mom. <laughs> she can still kick up her. Okay. Is, no the, is there a childhood secret you never told your mom? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I gotta sip the tea. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, real quick, celebs get do, celebs get celebrity hall passes. Everybody gets a hall do pass. They? Do they? Yes. Is that true? Yes, oh. everybody gets one. Okay. Who's yours? Mm. Oh, I don't think Danny would. Danny will allow a hall pass. Um, what does a celebrity hall pass mean? Meaning I guess like it means a, you could have like a little roll around and it would be okay with everything. This doesn't work. Hold up. That's a hard no a for me. A roll around. A you know roll around. A roll around. Just a roll around. <sighs> Come on. This is terrible. I, no. I'm oh, sipping the tea. We're so close. right there. That was the biggest tease ever. We, we love so you, Kate. Close. Come oh. see us next time, please. Don't I get to do one? Or oh, no. Yeah, sure. You can do one. You have one quick one. Go ahead. Hoda, what celebrity has made you wait the longest? <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, Jenna. Would you ever run for political office? Oh. Uh, no. That's okay. an easy one. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. No, but but great. I got mine in. I'm sorry. Okay, good right. job. Goodbye, Kate. By the way, you know what I love? How her hair is crimped. I wonder that? if she used a crimping iron. We should have asked her. Maybe we still can. It's a look that not setting. everybody could pull off. But I feel like you pulled that off, Jenna. The crimper? Yeah. I think she looks super cute. She's cool. And she's by the really way, cool. and she's, she's red. And she's, she's and she's forever young. Hope you will be with us tomorrow. Another big show on today. Really excited to share our conversation with Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. She's got a new children's oh, book. Nice. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great Monday.
coming up on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite dinner recipes that also make great leftovers. If you happen to be dining solo, these weeknight meals are hearty, healthy, and best of all, pretty easy to make, and you'll have a lot to share. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of feels like you need an occasion to cook. But guess what? You don't need to be going to a dinner party to make delicious food for yourself. Cause you know what? A party for one? It's hashtag still a party. So I'm gonna show you how to get this party started with my delicious, flavorful, best all ever, and a crunchy, creamy kale salad. Dal is a staple in Indian cooking. It was always on my dinner table growing up, thanks to my mom. My mom and I still shop for our lentils at Indian markets, but you can get them wherever you get your groceries. Little tip for cooking lentils, super important to always rinse them before you cook them. You wanna rinse them until the water runs clear so we get rid of any debris, and then we're gonna soak them. This will allow it to cook faster, and you can soak them either overnight or at least up to 30 minutes. I have my pre-soaked lentils here, and now all I'm gonna do is drain the water out, like so get any residual lentils out. Can't leave any behind, they'll feel left out. Okay, I'm gonna let these hang out for a bit while we prepare the base of our dal. I've heated my stove to medium heat and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil, let that heat up, and then I'll work on my onions, garlic, and ginger. Adding a bit of olive oil here. Let that heat up. Now, I'm gonna talk about my aromatics. So, onions, garlic, and ginger. I cannot imagine any dal without these base ingredients. They're the aromatics that really impart a lot of flavor. It's gonna become really deep and rich and flavorful, especially when paired with a fat like olive oil. I've got one whole onion that I've diced here, and I'm just gonna add it into my oil. We love that sizzle. And I just wanna saute the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. I'm adding them separately away from the ginger and garlic because I don't want these guys to burn while I cook them with onions. So while my onions are cooking, I'm gonna work on my ginger and garlic. By work on, I mean grate them. I'm using five cloves of garlic here because I love a garlic moment. If that scares you, you can take it down a notch, but I'm always gonna keep it up a notch. I'm just grating this on a microplane until they're nice and really fine. Grating the garlic this fine is gonna allow it to impart a lot of flavor onto this dal, especially when paired with those onions. I'm gonna be grating these forever. <laughs> Don't neglect your onions, okay? You wanna make sure these are happy too. Love garlic, I love garlic. No shame in my garlic game. Well, I'm adding five, five cloves. We're starting off strong. This recipe is truly one of my favorite plant-based meal options because it's super flavorful, but it's also packed with protein from the lentils, really warming spices. It's one of my favorites. I can't believe I'm microplaning and also looking at a camera. <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> okay garlic there. Now it's time for our ginger. Again, we can't neglect our onions. We want them to be tender and translucent and a little bit golden before we add the garlic and the ginger, just so we have already some caramelization going on before we hit the garlic and onions. Microplaning the garlic and the ginger is nice because it almost forms this paste, so it's going to be really easy to cook in with our onions as well. Going with my ginger. Ginger is super healthy for you, and actually so is garlic. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. That's so cute of me. <laughs> I know my heart is warm too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still grating this ginger. You can leave, I'll still be here grating ginger. <laughs> this is why I have only one bicep on my right arm. <laughs> because of my ginger grating skills. 
When you cook the onions and garlic and ginger in a fat like olive oil, it's going to really break down those flavors so it becomes super flavorful and aromatic. We want that when we're pairing it with something like a dal. I'm all done with my ginger. Got my ginger garlic minced grated situation here. My onions are looking tender, translucent, a little golden around the edges. So now it's the perfect time to add my ginger and garlic. You can see how it's kind of a paste. This is gonna be great for that flavor. I'm gonna cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions until all of the flavors really incorporate and it starts to brown a little bit. It smells so good. Now that my garlic and ginger have started to brown in with the onions, I'm gonna add my masala for my spices. My favorites to use here are my cayenne, my turmeric, cumin, and coriander. It's really important that you do roast these spices because you don't want that raw smell or that raw taste. You want it to be super well browned so that it's aromatic. It smells so good. Now that my masala smells really nice, <laughs> excuse me. Now that my masala smells really nice and toasty, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste here because I really like to impart that really deep tomato flavor, and when you brown this tomato paste, it's gonna taste so good. When you're cooking the tomato paste, you want it to turn a very deep, dark, red brick color. And again, nobody likes that raw tomato taste or smell, so you wanna really cook it through. Now that I've cooked my tomato paste in with my masala, it's time to add my crushed tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes here. There is no shame here. I love a canned tomato. I love convenience. You can use diced tomatoes as well. I love a canned tomato moment. I think especially if you're cooking for one, there's no reason why you shouldn't use what's already in your pantry. You want to cook these tomatoes for about three to five minutes until they reduce and darken in color. Cooking the tomatoes in with the onions, garlic, ginger, and spices is going to allow it to be a lot more flavorful. Lentils themselves don't have a ton of flavor on their own, so that's why adding all of these different ingredients and spices is gonna be really delicious for the actual dal itself. I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and pepper here. Now I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. And now we're gonna add some coconut milk. Instead of using a cream or a ghee or a butter, we're using coconut milk to give that same really delicious creamy flavor, but without the dairy. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. We're just waiting. We're a little impatient, but we're waiting. <laughs> we're almost there. We're making progress. I love adding coconut milk to lentils because it makes them super creamy. It looks like we're boiling. Now that we're boiling and in business, I'm gonna to reduce to a simmer and let it cook for five more minutes. Mmm, smells so good. Now we're gonna add our lentils. We're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes until the lentils are soft and the curry gets really nice and thick. It looks so creamy already. Just wait till it's done though. All right, see you later. for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin. Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? America journey tonight, St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the site of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community?
for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. It's been about 30 minutes, so you know what that means. My doll should be ready. It's looking so nice, so thick and delicious, but there are a couple more things that I want to add. I'm going to add in a little bit of sneaky spinach. This is not really traditional, but I do like to sneak some greens in where I can. Just chopped it up. Going to add that straight in there and stir it up until it wilts. Going in there. So you're just going to stir the spinach in until it wilts. Look at how thick that is. It looks so good. And the green adds some nice contrast to the red and yellow lentils, so it looks really aesthetically pleasing as well. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm also going to add some fresh lemon juice, just for some acidity. You've got a lot of heavy flavors here, so it's really nice to add a bit of tang at the end. Straight into my pot. We love a little lemon zing. Mix that lemon juice straight in there. I'm going to finish this all off by adding some fresh cilantro. The tender stems are okay, but I like to remove the thicker stems because those are a bit more bitter. You can totally chop this if you'd like, but I'm just going to tear it roughly. So I kind of like those big pieces of cilantro. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. Keyword almost. And now it's time for me to serve myself. This dal is super versatile because you can eat it straight up as a soup, or you can also serve it with some naan or some rice. Look at how thick that is too. Ooh, it's so creamy. Here's my sneaky spinach. Can't leave them behind. And then to garnish, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cilantro on top. Just a little for the picture, you know? This looks so pretty. I have to send a picture to my mom. She's gonna be so proud of me. Oh, and I gotta get that naan and rice in there too. This is such a party for one. Like, I love this for me. This is an amazing dish because it stores really well too, so you can totally freeze it or keep it in the fridge for up to a week. I think it is time for me to taste it. I'm gonna go in straight up. Mm. I think my mom and I need to have a doll off. It was really good. I think this would impress her. Don't mind me while I take another few bites of this doll, but next I'm going to show you a kale salad that you are absolutely going to love. Mmm, so good. Today shows newest fan. A little Al Roker. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We began our cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We began our cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin, here in Nashville, from Washington, D.C., the side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> 
Was talking smack part of this? What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. You might be thinking, another kale salad? Sama, did we really need another kale salad? And to that, I say yes, we need this one. It is my favorite creamy, crunchy, savory kale salad that's really gonna make you want to eat your greens. The first step that we're gonna do to make this salad is make our croutons. This is a great way to use up any of your leftover stale bread. Your stale bread is not destined for the trash, it's destined to be croutons. All right, here's my loaf of bread. I'm just gonna slice this up, dice it a bit, and then we're gonna season it. When you're slicing bread, always remember to use a serrated knife so that it can cut through the bread a lot easier. So I really like nice, thick, and crunchy croutons, so I'm gonna cut the bread slices pretty thick so we can get it there. Should be good. Now I'm just gonna dice up these slices of bread. There's nothing better than a crouton in a salad. It really just adds that nice, crunchy, savory element. Plus, I will really just eat bread like whenever I can get an opportunity. This is a great opportunity. Sourdough croutons are my favorite because it's got that nice tang and with the savory elements that we're gonna add, like the spices, it's gonna be so good. I'm one of those people that likes the end piece of a loaf of bread. They exist, I'm one of them. Now that I've got my croutons, all I'm gonna do is drizzle them with some olive oil and then season with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Seasoning with some salt. Some pepper. You can use your favorite seasonings here as well. But I love these three. Now I'm just gonna toss them. And you know what, this is a dinner for one, me being the one. So I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. Make sure the olive oil and spices really nicely coat the bread. These look nice and evenly seasoned, so now I'm just gonna transfer them to my parchment lined pan. I wanna make sure that these are nice and spread out so they get a really crisp and even bake. So I might even reserve some of these to bake off later so I can get that nice crisp crouton. Now, I'm just gonna throw them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you stir them once during baking. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We began our Cross America journey tonight. St. Louis, Austin. Here in Nashville. From Washington, D.C. The side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd Cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Well, guess what? My croutons are done. They look nice and golden and crisp. So I'm just gonna let them hang out and cool while I make my dressing. 
For the base of my salad dressing, I'm using tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, it's simply sesame seeds that have been ground up into a paste that's similar in texture to a peanut butter. It is my favorite savory grounding base for sauces and dressings. To my tahini, I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard, just for a bit of flavor. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, just a little. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this dressing to balance out the earthiness of the tahini. I also love a little tang in my dressings. It's gonna be so good. You want your salad dressing to be really bright and flavorful, especially when we're pairing it with a tougher green like a kale. All right, my lemon is in. I'm gonna whisk this a bit. Now I'm gonna add some of my spices. Got some freshly ground black pepper. Some salt. And for a little bit of spice, this seems to be the trend, some red pepper flakes. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. You'll notice that this dressing is starting to seize, which means that it's becoming a little bit difficult to mix. So all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cold water to help everything come together. You can add more or less water to get the dressing to your desired consistency. To me, a tahini-based dressing is really similar to a Caesar dressing, so I really like to use it on kale because there's nothing better than a really delicious kale Caesar. Look at how creamy this is. And no dairy. This looks really delicious and creamy to me. So I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on my kale. To prepare my kale, all I'm gonna do is remove these tough stems. I don't love these stems because they're a little bit too fibrous, so I really don't want them at my party. You can just tear it straight off and discard the stems. You could use a knife to chop this up, but tearing it is a lot more fun. Kale is a really good salad green because it's got all of these ridges that allow the dressing to really get all up in there. See ya. I like to keep the kale in bigger pieces here because when I marinate it in the dressing, it's gonna wilt down a little. I'm a kale whisperer. We're making kale fun again. Really. You thought you didn't need another kale salad? You were wrong. This is the only kale salad you'll ever need. And I'm not biased at all. This is completely impartial. It's not like this is my favorite kale salad or anything. Again, you could have definitely used a knife, but I just made the life choice not to. It's a lot more fun to tear it. Just gonna add my kale to my bowl. And this is where this dinner for one party gets really fun. I get to become a kale masseuse. I'm gonna add this dressing into my kale and just massage it so that the dressing gets all up into the ridges of the kale. Pouring that dressing straight in there. Okay. And now I'm just gonna use my hands, they are clean, and massage my kale. Massaging your kale is super important because it helps to break down those tough fibers in the kale and it really gets the dressing all evenly coated inside the kale. Look at it. The dressing is already coating it super nicely and it's becoming even softer. Okay, I got a little bit too excited massaging the kale so now I'm gonna go rinse my hands off. The kale has really had a nice massage. It's feeling super zen. So it's time to set it aside and I'm gonna prepare my add-ins. So I'm adding some tomatoes into the salad to add those really nice bursts of sweetness and it's gonna complement both the kale and the dressing really nicely. You can use grape tomatoes here, you can use cherry tomatoes. I find that these are a lot nicer and sweeter so that's why it's gonna be a great complement to this kale salad. That kale is so lucky though, it got a super long massage. <laughs> My favorite part about this kale salad is that you've got a lot of crunchy elements like these sunflower seeds and the croutons and some creamy elements like these beans and avocado. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice my avocado. So 
pretty. To dice this, I'm going to dice it in the skin. So I'm just going to create the dicing inside so it makes it a lot easier to scoop right out and into my salad. I'm creating little hashtags in honor of hashtag cooking. And then I'm going to add into my salad. Scoop it straight out. Make sure you get all the way to the peel, to the skin, so that you can remove the avocado easily, like so. <laughs> okay, this avocado is a bit resistant. It's fine. <laughs> all right, another half. Now we're moving on to another creamy component, my beans. These are gonna be really delicious because they're gonna add some protein, but also be super velvety and creamy in the salad. Add these straight in. I'm using white beans or cannellini beans here, but you can use whatever bean you'd like. Now I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds for another crunchy textural element. I'm gonna reserve some for the top. You can even use pumpkin seeds here if you'd like. And finally, for my croutons. Perhaps the reason you're interested in the salad in the first place? So these guys? I won't tell. I'm like kind of there with you. I'm just kidding, I love everything in the salad. I'm gonna reserve some croutons for the top as well, just to get that crunchiness. Now I'm gonna toss. Now I'm just gonna toss my salad together. There's so many fun elements going on here. It's a very exciting salad. And it's kind of pretty too. You got the tomatoes, which are nice and bright. Avocado. To finish it off, I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds on top. We're a little bit about aesthetics here. Not gonna front and some croutons too. And this is my kale salad dinner for one, which also means that I can eat out of this bowl and no one's really gonna know or care because it's just me. This is such a glamorous kale salad that I cannot eat it without taking a picture first. This will inspire any kale hater or kale skeptic to eat their kale, I promise. Just try it out. Now it's my turn to try it out. And even if I don't finish this all right now, this stores super well because it's just gonna marinate in its dressing for longer and get even more flavorful. Here I go. You just gotta get a little bit of everything. Some of the kale, the crouton, the tomato, maybe it's too much for me to get a bit of everything, but I'm gonna try. Okay. I really am trying to get a bit of everything and it's not gonna work. Will it work? Okay. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, Crunch from the sunflower seeds. Wait, I need a crouton. <laughs> really crunchy. <laughs> so good. Can you hear that? You can hear that? Mmm. You know what? I think they're gonna be a lot of kale converts after they try the salad. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. Good morning, break 
breaking news, show of force. The president considers deploying U.S. troops, warships, and aircraft with the Ukraine crisis deepening. NATO countries overnight announcing additional military assets to the region. And the State Department urging Americans to leave with Russian troops poised at the border. Just ahead, is there an off-ramp or is a Russian invasion 